Hey, everybody. It is Wednesday. And before we get started on today's show, let me have a minute to talk to you about a few of our really great sponsors. Let me start with these guys right here, Total T Clinic. And I want to start with them because <laughs> I want to tell you who, but I um, got a text message this morning from a buddy of mine and he was standing there and he took a picture of himself like a selfie at the sign going into Total T. And he said, um, I'm ready to, he said, I'm ready to get back on the stage is what he said. And he's a musician. And he, he like told me, he's like, I keep hearing you on 1090 talk about total T clinic and about guys, our age and energy levels and performance in the bedroom and all these things. He goes, and I know what you're talking about. So I finally decided to do it. And when he sent me the text, I said, Hey, you just tell David Alexander, who runs the place, you tell him that you're a great friend. You tell him that you're listening on the radio or watching on the podcast. So, uh, total T clinic. Alex, you're looking at the total T guy right here. That's that's how people now know me. You missed the total T, huh? That's what they mm. think. Add it to the resume we talked about yesterday. Mm. Yeah. Giver of work, Mr. Total T. Yeah, that's me. Um, okay. Hey, listen, let me tell you about Tory Holistics. Real simple. This one's easy. Tory Holistics, you save 20% when you use our promo code Kaplan, my last name, K-A-P-L-A-M. If you are someone who likes to smoke weed or has chronic pain and wants to use CBD or has medical related issues and uses cannabis, whatever your you know reasoning for, for using cannabis is recreational or medical. Um, if you're going to buy it, you buy it from our people, Tori Holistics, and you do it because nobody gets a 20% discount other than great friends. So you go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com, click on the Tory Holistics link. You walk in, you show them, here it is, Kaplan. Or if you're doing it all online, you can put, type in the promo code Kaplan. But it's when you spend $75 or more, just so you know. Um, and if you have problems, contact me, contact Ruthie at, at Tory Holistics. If you go to their website, they've got like a chat where you can talk to somebody. So if you have any problems, but you shouldn't, okay? Use our promo code Kaplan. When you're there, these guys, Hellman Valley Growers Company. I've been telling you about these guys for probably six months already. These are the former Marines who got into the cannabis industry because prescription pills were not helping their PTSD issues, but one of their guys was using cannabis and was getting great results. And so they went into the business, they put all of their profits right back into research and they're getting really close because they've been working with the federal government so that cannabis can become um, a known and accepted form of treatment for PTSD. So helping military veterans that's our people at HVGC, Helmet Valley Growers Company. And then just the last thing I'd like to mention everybody is Cited. Um, I have mentioned it in a little while, but um, the app is growing. So many of you are our, our early adopters. Really, really appreciate the fact that you're on there and you're playing around and you're debating and you're having conversations. And um, it's just, it's a growing platform. And this audience, us together, we're the ones who are building it. We're the ones who are spreading it. So um, spread the word because uh, it's fun. like it's And it's actually becoming more fun as more people are getting on board and there's more back and forth and there's more interesting content. There's some shitty content out there too. There's some really shitty content, but, um, but there's some really good stuff too and it's fun. And so come join us and download the app for Sided. Ready to start the show? I am. Yo, great friends. What is going on Wednesday afternoon? Kaplan and crew. Yeah. Taken to the airwaves of 1090, which by the way, I always find it interesting to have people tell me that they're listening to the show on 1090 because it just kind of tells me that it's growing and people are starting to understand that 1090 is back on the radio. So for those of you that are just getting with us on 1090, awesome. For those of you that have been with us for the last two years as we've, as we've built a podcast on video streaming on YouTube and on Facebook and all of the audio podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, we're on all of them. You know, we're, wherever you are, that's where we're trying to be. We're not expecting you to just come to the radio the way the world worked two years ago. So glad to have everybody along. I got to say real quick, right off the top. This Tiger Woods story happened yesterday while we were on the air, and now we've had you know, 24 hours to digest. Man, crazy, right? Because a year ago today, 
a year ago today was the Kobe Bryant celebration of life. You know, it was a public funeral, if you will. And so think about that for a second, that a year plus ago was the Kobe tragedy and a year plus later, a day before the Kobe Bryant celebration of life, Tiger Woods gets into this really bad car accident. And I think most people thought right away, like, oh no, oh no, 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 not not another one of my favorite superstars who, by the way, has lived this public life of tremendous highs, the lowest of the lows, the rebuilding of reputation all in public, more lows of lows, more comebacks and highs. I mean, we've lived Tiger Woods' entire life from the time he's 17 years old to the time today, you know? So the news looks good for Tiger in terms of it's just a bunch of broken bones and muscle problems and, you know, put it this way, put it this way. He's alive. Okay. Let that, let me say it like that. Dude's alive. So that's my first thought. I'm just getting started. I think we'll talk about this quite a bit. The whole world went Tiger centric yesterday. You could have had on ESPN. You could have had on CNN. Every, it didn't matter. Every news outlet was live from the crash site or in front of the hospital. And it was wall to wall tiger coverage. And that's when you have a Hollywood story of fame, fortune, uh, drugs, booze, sex. When you have all of those elements, you drop everything that's going on. You go all in on that. And that's what happened. That's what happened. All right. Let me start off this afternoon by saying hola to hermano numero uno, grande Alejandro 805 in La Casa, Oxnard, California's favorite son, and Ventura County representing hola grande. Hello, everybody. I have reached conclusion in the Cricket Chronicles of House Padilla, officially, officially, officially. Um, if you have followed along, you know that I have had a cricket under my refrigerator for about two weeks now. I believe Saturday morning, not this last Saturday, so last two Saturdays ago, I tweeted a video saying, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. So I, I sprayed so much stuff under my fridge that he stopped making any sort of noise for a lot of days. And I was like, okay, dude's dead. It's over. Great. Uh, Tweeted the video, still nothing. Went to Joshua Tree for three days. No, didn't. My sisters didn't complain about it. They were here watching the dog. Then Sunday afternoon, not at night. Afternoon, a cricket comes, and he comes with a vengeance. It was loud, man. I'm telling you, you never heard a cricket this loud or consistent your entire life. Sunday, Monday. During the day, I don't know if you heard it on Monday or Tuesday during the show. Like he was going at it till Tuesday. My fiance has been working from home. She's had enough. Finally, she's had enough. And she's like, We're moving the fridge. We're gonna find this thing. About like, time. Right, let's do this. Well, I mean, you know, we thought I, we thought we took care of it. And I, I thought I took care of it. Did not take care of it. Move the fridge. And I'm like, all right, let me kill it. She goes, No, 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 no. Can't kill it. And that's where my, my head starts going. What do you mean I can't kill it? This is an insect in our home. You know, whether it be spider, whether it be, a, God forbid, cockroach, you know, you kill it. That's what you do. She does not let me kill it. She proceeds to push me away. And I'm sure she's listening right now, just rolling her eyes at me because she's in the room next door. She gets a glass and a piece of uh, junk mail. She puts it in a cup. There it is. The largest cricket I've ever seen in my life that lived in my home for two weeks was caught by my fiance because she didn't let me kill it. And she set it free. And because my life is this endless loop of what is going on, that cricket is now outside our window. And I heard it last night outside our window. And she says it's not the same cricket because she left it in the front door and this is towards the back. Just saying. 
could have killed the cricket. She did not let me kill the cricket. And while I was sleeping, to keep the story going, Scott, you'll love this. While I was sleeping, she was not sleeping. She was on sighted. And you know what she did? You know what she did? She posted a question on sighted. What would you do if you found a cricket in your home? And that's literally what she posted on sighted yesterday. You find a cricket in your home, do you kill it or take it outside? And I am glad that the majority of people are on my end right now. 72% say, you kill it. And that's all I got for you guys. Wow. I can I I got to react to that. Um, <laughs> I was absolutely hypnotized by that story. Thank you. Thank you. Hi hypnotized. Yeah. By that story. yeah. Because, because I'm with you. Like when it comes to bugs, first instinct is kill. But then I start to think to myself, that cricket might be looking for his family. <laughs> Don't do that, dude. Don't do that. Come that on, cricket, man. that cricket might be crying for help. Help me. I'm stuck under this refrigerator in this guy's house. Please, somebody help me. And then there you are to stomp on him. Yeah, I would have swatted. I would have just, I would have smashed that guy with my left or right foot just real quick. Real quick. Did you ask your fiance, hey, look, if it were a rat or a mouse, would you just trap it and take it outside and release it? I can yell at her real quick. Hold on. Mar, if it was a rat or a mouse, could I have killed it or would I, or capture it and then put it outside? She says that is a Corky's question. Oh, all right. Well, she's a lover, your fiance. You know, yeah. she sounds like a lovely human being. I mean, yeah. not that I mean, when I say it sounds like, I mean, I didn't know this part of her, her game. Me neither. Me neither. She's petrified of all these things, but yet she wants to keep them all alive. So here we are. Women are so much tougher than dudes too, by the way. Like our first instinct is crush, kill. They're like, no, love and nurture and take care of, you know, like I, I think I've told you a story about this one time that um, I had this snake in my backyard slithering across the, 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 you know, concrete or whatever. And I was so scared. I was so petrified. And I had little kids at the time. And we had this, this lady who, who worked in the house at the time. Uh, her name was Sit Lally. She was the most amazing human being on the planet. She could do anything, fix anything, paint anything. I mean, anything that had to be done, cook, clean, fix anything. She could do it all. We had four little kids at the time. So we had this, this woman helping us. And uh, I saw this snake in the backyard. I'm like, sit Lally, help me. <laughs> like I'm inside. I'm in, I'm fine. I'm safe. Yeah. She came out. She took like a piece of Tupperware. She got that snake into this piece of Tupperware. And then she went out and released it like in a Canyon. And I'm like, how did you do that? And she said, you know, where I live and TJ, we would, we would have snakes. You know, my dad taught me early how to deal with yeah. snakes, yeah. you know, man. I, I mean, that's a whole different level, dude. I, I, I'm not going to pretend that a snake wouldn't freak me out either. So no, dude, I scared and I was crying and scared and sit Lally took yeah. care of it. Miss you sit Lally. Shout out girl. I see you on Facebook. Hashtag shout out. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm curious to hear the first thoughts of a guy who I'm sure was hypnotized like I was. Six foot, seven inches tall, twisted steel, sex appeal, big sacks, big max, hot take machine, brown saw. Mr. Soda. Yeah. Art connoisseur specializing in a Basquiat. It's like he's got a gallery. He's bringing the street cred from the podcast shed. And today... He rocking for all of us to see in all of its glory. This guy hasn't been on a broadcast on radio or video stream. This guy hasn't been on a broadcast without a hat of some sort from telling you a year COVID. Today, he's giving us a first look at his new Jay-Z do. Ladies and gentlemen, Big Brown himself, John Browner in the house. Yo, what's up, everybody? Um, I know the hair looks insane. I know. It's been matted down. It's been covered up for a long time. What do you think of it, Alex? I mean, just give it – what, what do you think of Browner's new hair game? I like it, dude, and it is very much Jay-Z-ish. I, I don't know if it's current Jay-Z or recent Jay-Z, but it's very much on point with Hope. Yeah. Shout out. Um, 
for the Tiger Woods story, because the cricket story is interesting. I'll half and half this thing. I'll make both of them <laughs> quick. I would have done the same thing. I have a weird thing with, like, I kill mice. I kill rats. I also kill ants. I kill roaches. Everything else, like bees, I swat them away. A snake, I would save it and throw it away. Um, <laughs> the cricket. I honestly, after what you've been through with the cricket, I would have put some grass in that drawer and in, in that jar, covered it up, put some holes in the top, and just let that jump live, man. Just let that jump live. But I digress. Tiger Woods, the story of Tiger Woods and what happened to Tiger Woods is very sad. What happens when the media tries to get a hold of a story that doesn't exist? He got into an accident. That's the story. He wasn't high. He wasn't drunk. He wasn't getting roadhead. He literally just crashed at a place road where, where <laughs> they say it's great. You should try it. Um, it, it no, don't want to try it. Not give it. Get oh. it. Listen, what you doing? Wait, wait, wait. Before you try to paint me into a corner, what you do on your own time is your own business. If you want to give roadhead, that's your own. That's your business. Love is love. Okay. Second. It's not a story. So stop trying to find this nugget of, of negativity in the story of a bad driver on a difficult road. What's the negativity? That's, where, uh, where, that's literally the story. Where is it being? So, what do you mean? I'm, I'm being totally serious because like, yeah, I, like I think that if anything, the media, this is just my own opinion, but the media has presented this story with a very um, hopeful tone like, you know, I, I really hope that he's good and that this isn't drug related and it's not because he's had transgressions, blah, blah, blah. So what do you mean by negative? Let me hear. At, at the press conference yesterday, the tone of questions mm -hmm. that were coming at these officers, the, the guy who was first on the scene, mm -hmm. they were trying every which way to ask the same question, which was simply, was he high? Was he inebriated? Was he under some type of influence of something? Not, not a, a, a fair line of questioning? Once that or twice, question, absolutely. Yeah, that questioning isn't isn't specific to Tiger Woods, isn't it? Really specific to all single car accidents. When you see one yeah. car on its own, that's kind of the line of questioning. Yes, once or twice, once or twice. But that same question was presented in a different package, four or five, maybe six times. Because I watched the entire press conference, mm -hmm. they kept asking the same question in a different way mm -hmm. to try to get him to say either. I should have sobriety tested him or there should be some type of test coming. Like the guy was just in an accident. Well, period. Well, but, okay. Hold on. Let me just throw in a possibility at you. You ready? Please do. Okay. So I'm kind of with the mass media in terms of, gosh, I love Tiger Woods. And I hope to, you know, I hope to God that it was just an accident, you know, and thank goodness he didn't hurt anybody else because what if he was distracted by a text? You guys know me. I'm a I'm guilty, man. I am a driver texter type. I'm gonna stop. I promise you guys. I'm literally putting my phone down in my car and I'm not gonna mess with it because what if Tiger was just distracted by a text? Or what if Tiger was distracted by trying to follow a map on his phone? Or what if Tiger was distracted by him using some app while driving, Twitter or Instagram? I mean, no, no BS, seriously. Like that's how I'm approaching it. Like I, I hope that this was nothing, but because of his background and because of multiple incidents in cars and incidents where there has been drugs involved, uh, prescription pills, I think that this is legit. And I think that people have another, I, I actually think, I think we have the right to know because it could have just been an accident. I heard somebody mention today, the possibility of Ambien you know, and like Ambien not being out of your system. And I, I just saw this on Twitter, so I don't want to spread anything negative, but you know what I'm saying? Like Brown or like, what if, what if that were the case? I, the whole Ambien thing, I have no idea. So I won't comment on that in a situation like this. But again, I, I agree because of his previous history and because of his popularity and fame. I, those are fair questions to ask a couple of times. I just think I, it's the TMZification of news now, dude. That's what it is. Because the the why was MSNBC covering this yesterday? There's no reason for for MSNBC to be covering this yesterday. Like it was it was the news for every single news show 
cable, sports, local, whatever. I just think there was such an overkill because of the TMZ application that I'm calling it of all nice. news. The gossip, okay, I disagree. the gossipy, the knowing what clicks, the knowing the headlines is more significant than I don't know what happened yesterday. Uh, there's like hearings for people being sworn in. 500,000 people. I'm not telling you like they should cover this. I just, that's where the news is nowadays. Here's where I disagree with you. If LeBron James would have gotten to the equivalent of that accident, he has no drug history. He has no uh, uh, extramarital affair history. His public image is very clean. Mm -hmm. If he had gotten the exact same accident, mm -hmm. the coverage would have been the same mm -hmm. across platform, right. regardless of what you cover. Right. So I don't, I don't necessarily think it's the salacious part that make Tiger make the news on MSNBC. I think it's the history of Tiger Woods as an athlete, which how is he why came into our household. It's why it made MSNBC. It's why it made CNN. It's why it made Fox. But, because if LeBron got into the same accident, I think you would get the same. Yeah. I think you just answered your own question. Right. What, why, no. are, why are they asking the question? It's his history. It's everything no, no, we know was, about I was, him. I was commenting on your question as to why it was on the lead but story was, on MSNBC. Well, like, it wasn't just the lead story. It was like the they, whole wall show. to wall. They went wall to wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Right. So. But okay. you're 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 saying that you thought that the questioning was negative, and yes. and I'm saying that I think asking any question, regardless of how many times you ask it and how many different forms, you know, the only Did thing the people, sheriff give answers. Yes. Yes. He straight he up gave said, the same answer. He straight every up time. Said, the same answer, but did he give the answer that they wanted to hear? And you know the question. No. Was, right. So that's until they, they gave asking. that answer, that's right. what they're going to keep asking. Right. Because we've learned this in sports. Point. We've learned this in sports. You know, we saw Jalen Ramsey walk off on hard knocks against reporters because they were asking him the same questions about his contract. And he just didn't answer. He didn't give them the answer that they wanted to hear. So they kept asking questions. And that's the way the press has been forever. If you don't get the if you don't get the answer you're looking for because it doesn't exist from a factual basis as a police officer, he's not allowed to to just kind of fly off on his own and give you some own, different interpretation. He has to go by the law and the way that it's supposed to be reported because of privacy laws. And so he's going to keep answering that question in that same way. It's your job as a reporter if you're trying to write this particular type of story to get it in a different way. Right, so here's the thing, and you guys know I'm the most like chill person of the three of us here when i'm looking for a story i had i would have no issues if 20 questions were asked at the press conference and they were all about drug prescription drug he was also remember let's not forget he's going through back rehabilitation he's probably taking some sort of medication i don't there, think those that, those questions were unfair at all that's it right there that's just it so what if he was taking pain meds for his back what if he was taking sleeping pills of some sort because he's what whatever the case may be, given his history, um, I think it's legit to ask those questions because the assumption that it was just an accident and there's nothing to see here is um uh, given who the person is, I disagree. And given how gnarly hand, the accident was, too. And, and you know, I think Browner's point about LeBron and the coverage being the same, I agree, it would be wall-to-wall. -wall. The difference is, is that without the history of drugs and whatever else and surgeries, um, the line of questioning might be very different. On the other hand, as a one-car accident, maybe it's the same. Hey, we'll keep it going. Let, let's talk more about this because I actually find this interesting, too. It's not just... Uh, the, it's not just the accident and who was in it, but also the coverage of it. I find that very interesting as well. All right, we got a great show coming up today. Big Bad Burt Grossman, Browner's partner. Oh, man. Is he mad? Yeah. Did he hear about yesterday's news with with the Monday 6 to 7 show? Has he heard about this? <laughs> I haven't talked Is he to about to go off on uh, you? I don't know. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Stick around, everybody. We got a great show, and apparently Grossman's going to go off on me. Hang out with us. Hey, great friends. It is a Wednesday afternoon. It's like my favorite time of the day. Kaplan and crew, I get to hang out with all of you guys who are listening on 1090. Many of you who are old school sports talk radio listeners and have been with us forever and never really came over 
to the podcast video streaming world, I'd run into you guys on the streets and you'd be like, yo, when are you going to get back on the radio? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Why don't you just come watch on your phone or listen on your phone? You're like, no, no, no. I like to get my car, turn on the radio. So we're back. We are back on the radio, different form, a little different show. Uh, a lot of the same characters, but, um, I'm telling you, just uh, happy to be back on 1090 and, um, I'm happy to keep running into people or hearing from people that are listening on the radio. For those of you that prefer to come over here and be part of the video streaming on YouTube and Facebook, hey, get involved in the YouTube chat. Maybe leave a comment, give a little thumbs up action. And um, for those of you that are on Facebook, start a watch party, share, get all your friends from San Diego who might be around the, the country, or maybe they're just in town and they're doing other things. Just give them a little notice. Yo, um, we're on and we're all hanging out. And I want to say this, um, for old school, great friends, I want to start doing a new feature on the show. Alex, I know you and I have talked about this off the air. I want to do great friends, catch-ups, not like what catch you up. put on a burger. No, 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 no. Like, like catch up, like hang out. Oh. So, so cats up. No, no, <laughs> what? no, no, not cats up. So we're not talking about the tomato based dipping sauce. No, actually, we're talking about C A T H catch up. Ah, catch. I want to catch. I want to catch up with you people. Got it. Tomorrow, my man Gary from Ego Trip. You see, the, like old school, great friends. Gary was going to stop by today. Couldn't do it. You know why? Vincent Jackson funeral via Zoom. Zoom funerals now, dude. Been to a few yeah. myself. Yeah. And Vincent Jackson's is today. Ego Trip. This all happened through the radio show. Became like lifelong friends with Vincent Jackson. And is like, you know, like so many others, just crushed over this. So uh, I want to start doing catch-ups with great friends. Guys, girls, email us. Scott Kaplan Vlog, V-L-O-G. Scott Kaplan Vlog at gmail.com. If you're an old school great friend and you want to get on the show, we're going to start doing them. Just hangout sessions. Like, what's going on in your life? Where are you? What are you doing? And uh, and I know a lot of these names will be familiar to longtime great friends. Okay. <laughs> Fellas, we were talking about Tiger Woods and what happened yesterday and the coverage of what happened yesterday. Let me ask you this. First and foremost, uh, I'm glad he's okay. And when I say okay, I'm glad he's alive. Glad he's alive. You know, a lot of people right away equated Kobe Bryant. Oh, no, not again. Not another. Oh, my God. 2020 will never end, even though it's ended. Just a quick question, though. Now that you know he's alive, now that he's gone through these surgeries, rods inserted in his legs, muscles like all mangled, okay, still dealing with back problems, he, you know, my question to you guys is this. You think Tiger Woods ever, ever, ever returns to a PGA Tour golf tournament? Because so many people jump to this. Well, he's done. Well, he'll never catch Jack Nicholas. His quest to have the most majors will never, will never see it. It's over now. He's done, done, done. He'll never win. He'll never, he'll never achieve the goal. Um, he'll never play again. What do you think? I think he's going to play again 100%. It's just the kind of guy he seems to have always been. The ultimate competitor that you talked about that's been instilled in him since he was a child. He's 45 years old. I mean, freaking Tom Brady's winning Super Bowls at 43. I think it was a long shot for him to win another major after the previous back injury. It's just so much back injuries, man, that leads to other parts of his body not working. Um, to play again, yes, 100%. Now, when? You know, 2023, 2022, I don't know. But he'll play again. He'll play again for sure. And I hope he does play again. I, I, this would be, you know, we always go back to Kobe. I'm not talking about his helicopter accident. He went out and he he finished with that 60-point game, right? But really, that's the last good memory you have of Kobe playing because before that, it was injury, Achilles injury, just not the Kobe that you're used to. And I hate when players go out that way as opposed to players going out like, you know, Tom Brady could easily go out on top. Elway went out on top. I would love to see that. I don't know if it's going to happen, but for a fact, I'm willing to bet, and I am not a better, but I am willing to bet many things. 
he will play for sure 100 in the pga big brown what do you think man what i hope and what i think are two different things i think he will 100 play again i hope he does never i hope he never plays again i honestly do because the last time we saw tiger woods on the golf course he was hugging his son that's the last time we saw him that image of tiger woods after everything that we've saw him go through in his life the final time we talked about him as a professional on the course was him having a great time with his son. As far as I'm concerned, that's a great way to close the book on your career. As a competitor, as the person who became Tiger Woods, there's no way he's going to let the book in like mm -hmm. this. There's no way this is going to be last chapter mm -hmm. or last scene in the mm -hmm. film. So I 100% I, I believe he'll play again. I don't think he will win anything. But I think for the satisfaction and and the and, and the person who he is, he has to play. It. Think about the story, Scott. Before you even talk about winning again or whatever, just think about just the right. story of him playing again. Right. It's going to be amazing. And if he makes the cut, and you see him in the red shirt on a Sunday, whether regardless of where he finishes on whatever tournament it is, it could. And he loves farmers. Who knows what time of year he comes back? If he does come back, just him playing again will be an incredible story in itself because that leg. When you read about the injuries and the compound fractures and multiple broken bones, ankle up and down, tibula, fibula, it's going to be a long road for him to come back. So the story itself of him even coming back is going to be incredible just playing. Right. Not yeah. winning. See, right. See, this is what I was thinking is that, okay, so these are devastating injuries, you know, like just, just listen, let's, let's time out for a second from Tiger, just for a quick second. What if this were you? me, any of us, anybody listening right now, anybody watching right now, what if this was us, you know, um, car accidents happen all day, every day, you know, and everybody, you know, gets in their car and drives someplace, maybe less now than a year ago, but you understand what I'm saying. Think about how devastating these injuries would be. Think about going to a hospital, emergency surgeries, by the way, would you and me have gotten the exact same treatment Tiger got? Because did they call somebody and go, hey, it's Tiger Woods. Get somebody who's who's really good in there because the average guy, the average doc who's available, we need to get the best of the best. It sounds like he was treated like you or me would have been treated. Pull him out, ambulance, <laughs> right into emergency surgery. Uh, it was, I think it was that bad. that They didn't really have a choice. They're like, we got to right. It sounded like they saved the leg almost type, type injuries. So... Think about how inconvenient this would be and how thankful and grateful you would be just to be alive as you're sitting in your house all casted up, can't move, can't do anything, need help for everything. Believe me, for Tiger, um, he got plenty of people and plenty of money to help him all day long. Um, you and me, we're waiting on like, you know, our insurance, hopefully, to send a rehab nurse of some sort. Yeah. Aflac. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so to get your life back, not your playing career, just get your life back. Priority number one. And thinking about the nature of the injuries compounded with what he already was dealing with. Think about how long it would take for him to be able to walk 18 yeah. holes. But fellas, listen, come on. Let's back up. Let's back up a little bit. I think we we are we are forgetting something, a very large picture that we discussed on this show. Alex Smith almost lost his entire leg. There's a documentary that goes through what Alex Smith went through to play football again, not walk 18 holes of golf, to play football again. The way with the amount of money Tiger Woods has with the medical attention that he will be able to get, with the rehab he will be able to afford. I don't think I don't think that this is gonna be that difficult of a hill for that particular to, particular individual to climb. Oh, wait, wait. For us, we'd be we be screwed. Let me ask you this. Hold on. Let me ask you this. You just talked about the um physical part. Yes. So Alex Smith, to your point. We're all fascinated by this. This guy, yes. this guy had a compound fracture in a football game, nearly lost his leg and his life in a football game and chose to come back. <laughs> right. Like Alex Smith had lifetime money and could have chosen to have said, bye-bye, thanks football. Alex Smith in his heart had to prove to himself he could come back. I believe Tiger Woods is wired the exact same way. And I think in his heart, he'll have to prove to himself 
that he can come back. Remember our friend Paul Vaden, who the boxer who was in a fight and knocked the guy out, and like a week later he died, the, the other fighter. And Paul Vaden had to get back into the boxing ring, not for money, not for fame, not for a belt. He had to prove to himself that he could. Traumatic emotional things are, is what I'm trying to say to you here. You're talking about the physical Big Brown, that he'll get his legs together, he'll rehab, and he'll be able to walk 18 holes, and he'll be able to swing a golf club. I'm talking about the emotional here. You know, like, does he want it? Um, can he deal with it? You know, what's it like for him to be in front of crowds a year or two from now? I mean, dude, I don't know. And this I mean, is all speculation. This is all speculation, too. Let's what we always talk about with athletes retiring and why it's so difficult for them to retire is what do they do after? That was what was so I keep bringing up Kobe, but that was what's so great about Kobe. He transitioned so seamlessly into life after basketball. Tiger Woods is golfing on his free time with David Spade and Dwayne Wade. He was on his way to meet Drew Brees and Justin Herbert to golf. I don't I haven't watched the Tiger documentary. I don't I, Tiger's a very private person. So I don't know what his interests are outside of golf. That's another thing when you talk about will he come back? What else does Tiger do outside of golf? Does he have a life outside of golf that he is interested in? Cuz every single time he has these that seem like catastrophic injuries. His whole goal is let me get rehabbed to come back. Let me get that's Again, what he was I, doing right now. He was doing that right before this accident. He was rehabbing to come back. He was speaking with Jim Nance at the Genesis Open, talking about will you play in the Masters? I'm not sure. I'm rehabbing to come back. Like, I don't really know what Tiger does outside of golf to lead me to believe that he won't try to come back because that's what he knows what to do. He doesn't. I'll, I'll revisit my first point because I I, I I I really want this for him. I hope he doesn't play again. Tiger Woods has given the game of golf. He's given the public eye enough. But why though? Why not the, play again? The, golf the, isn't football. Golf isn't like he's going to go out and get tackled by Aaron Donald on your first snap back. Why not play again? Like golf is a retirement the, sport. <laughs> like why? Not because not play again? because he's a human. He's a man. And there, there is a possibility the person, Eldridge, has felt like he's given enough. He's tired of being in the public eye. Because if you or I rolled over our car in that, at that same spot where many other people, according to the Highway Patrol, have rolled their car over, it's not a story. It's only a story because he did it. And so maybe this is it for him. Maybe he's had enough of whatever this is. And he doesn't want. I don't know. To, again, maybe he's got he's got yeah. kids that he may want to be around maybe, for. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's all, all it is. I can tell you this. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. tell you this. Um, he is a real person. Okay. Um, <laughs> he he drives himself places. Clearly, he doesn't poorly. He doesn't have an entourage around him at all times. He doesn't have a driver for whatever reason. You know, he didn't have a personal assistant. He didn't have, uh, like I said, a handler. He's a real person. He drives a car just like you and me, puts on his pants the same way. The difference is he's the greatest golfer of the generation and he's a, a billionaire. And, and you ask the question, will he come back? What drives him? You know, again, you just use Alex Smith as an example. Why would Alex Smith have put himself in harm's way to come back and play NFL football? You know why? Because inside of his heart, the, the person that he really, really is inside of his heart, he had to prove it to himself. And by the way, I think he did. I think Alex Smith proved his point. He's a bad man. You know, Tiger Woods, I believe, is has the same thing deep, deep, deep inside of his heart. As much as he's an ecosystem and an economy all unto himself, and he's got sponsors and he's got people that pay him a fortune and people that use his brand, um, people will be able to use his brand forever. Um, but does he have a responsibility the way he lo looks at things to the game, um, to the sponsors, to the fans? Uh, I don't know. I think so. That's I, I, I do. So I really think that Tiger Woods, to your point, Browner, who is he deep inside? I actually think he'll want to come back. I, I think he'll, I think he'll want to play again. But, and I'll just add this on top of it. I actually think he will want to. And we'll work towards and will eventually, maybe I'm nuts here. Maybe I'm just dreaming. I think he'll win again. 
Well, it's just because he just won the Masters, what, two years ago? 19. You know, yeah. so it's still it's still fresh in our head that he's able to do that. Uh, my really, my only hope, because Tiger is such a private person. Uh, yeah, he, he's, he's the biggest golfer in the world. He is golf to me. If Tiger's not playing, I'm not watching. That's just I'm into for me. I'm with you. Yep. The Tiger documentary that you watched, Scott, was made without his consent. It wasn't That's like right. he had any part to do with it. Mm -hmm. My hope is that he does do an Alex Smith type documentary inside this re rehabilitation. Let's get to know Tiger. If he does it, I mean, he has no reason to do it, but I, that would, that's my hope. I want to see what this really looks like because this guy knows rehab. Yeah, <laughs> he knows right. rehab more than any athlete, man. All right, I know. Hey, listen, let me have a second here, just to uh, to take a second, a break for a, a minute here, and just tell you guys about Corky's Pest Control because Cork has been with me, man. I'm telling you, it's like 20 years. You know, and um, <laughs> I told the story about this past weekend going out to visit Corky, who got his vaccinations because he's been literally quarantined for a year. And um, and I went out to visit with him. I brought him a bottle of champagne and we hugged it out, which was awesome because he's feeling now like, hey, got the vaccine. I'm good. And I'm, I'm so happy about that. And um, what was funny was the next day, a friend of mine called me and said, "Uh oh, I got termites. You got to connect me to Corky like right away. So I did. And I'll do that for you, too, if you need me to. But he, I, I literally called Cork. Cork was on the phone with my pal a few minutes later. Then Corky's, the company came to look at what the situation was. And they determined that, yeah, you do have termites, but we don't have to tent the house. You don't have to move out. It's here and it's here. And we're going to do some spot treatment and we're going to take care of it, which they did. And when my friend called me and said, hey, does this seem like a good price? I thought to myself, um, first of all, you're probably getting some kind of a bro deal of some sort. Secondly, they hurried up and showed up and dealt with this for you right away. And third, the best part was they have lots of different techniques to take care of these kinds of things. So I think you're getting a really great deal. Um, I was actually surprised at how inexpensive it was, frankly. So listen, whether you've got termites or maybe you've got a cricket, maybe you've got a cricket yep. that, you, that you want dead. You know, maybe your fiance won't let you kill it, but she'll let Corky's kill it. Well, she did say the mice would be a Corky's call. So, yeah. So call Cork, call him up wherever you're at. If you are in LA, if you are in Riverside, if you are in San Diego, you call Corky's. He'll come take care of it for you. You ready? Call 1-800-901-1102. Corky's. Corky's. All right. Hey, um, Burke Grossman's coming up in a little bit. Looking forward to that. Hey, Browner, how did uh, the Tony Mandarich interview go? I saw clips of it on Twitter, but I can't wait to go back and watch it. How long? Was it one segment? Was it a full hour? How'd it go? We gave it the full treatment. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, I, didn't, I didn't know much of the story that he told, but it was very interesting. I think a lot of people are going to enjoy the way we covered it because a lot of people cover certain things about him mm -hmm. that we kind of, we got into it a little bit, but not, but what we talked about was a different part of his life and a different part of how things happened to him. So I think people are going to enjoy I, it. I did see Bert say something like, um, you know, cause I think Bert and Mandarich were the same draft class. Same, same draft. Right. Saw each other at the combine. And so Mandarich was probably what, like the number two or three pick, I think. Number two pick. And then Bert was like number nine, maybe. Number seven. Oh. So the, the funny part about that draft, the top 10 guys are in the hall of fame except for two. Mandarich and Burt. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. Oh my God. You're gonna have to can you do you have that list of the top ten guys and and who and yeah, I can get what, oh yeah. what year was you drafted? 89? Burt was drafted uh, 89, 88, 89. 80, yeah. yeah, I think it was the 89 draft. So like April of 89, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, wow. That's hilarious. I didn't know that. Ten guys all drafted the top ten of the of the draft class. Everybody's in the Hall of Fame other than Tony Mandarich and Burt Gross. I had no idea. Here's the top again, here's the top five. Troy Aikman. Hall of Famer. Tony Mandarich. Not. Not. Gary Sanders. <laughs> yep. Derek Thomas. Yep. Deion is Derek Sanders. Thomas? Is Derek? Yeah, Derek Thomas is in the Hall of Fame, right? For the Chiefs, yeah. And Deion Sanders. Clearly. I love Deion Sanders. And then. I freaking love him. Oh, God. Please. No, dude. I'm going to order some Jackson State gear. Stop. No, oh, come on. <sighs> Did you thank you for so thank you for supporting uh, uh HBCUs? I will thank you for that. And you know what? That's where I'll stop. Mm. Thank you for supporting the historical black college university. You're welcome. You know how I get down. Is Deion <laughs> Sanders GoFundMe page public yet? It, it, it will be soon if it's not. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. 
God, listen, we don't have man. time for it, unfortunately. Okay, well, maybe next okay, second. Okay, you okay, could okay, in, okay. enlighten Scott. All right, Bert's coming up soon, right? Yeah, soon. Okay, and um, and also today we're going to talk to the guy who runs CIF San Ooh, Diego. I think tomorrow. That oh, just got changed. That just okay. got changed. Great, great, great. Okay, um, I love Deion Sanders. I'll tell you why. Coming right back, and then we'll have Browner hate because that's how he <laughs> that's how he does it. <laughs> Hang around. All right, great friends. What's going on on a Wednesday afternoon? Happy to have everybody back with us. If you are listening on 1090 on the radio, awesome. Okay. Great to have you guys, all the radio listeners. Shout out to my man, Bill Hagan. Hey, I don't know if this is like signed, sealed, and delivered, but I don't care, man. I'll tell you anyway. It's not. Uh, I, I don't care. Uh, and Bill will call me today and he'll complain <laughs> to me. And that's never stopped you before. I, either. Oh, Here, I was on it, the phone with Bill this morning. You were. Here, here's, what I, here's what I'll say. So when we left 1090 and we left radio completely and we got into the world of podcasting and we didn't have any idea what we were doing and maybe in some ways we still don't, all we did was, was maintain, like we just, we, we, Billy Ray cut, retired, Linda moved into another part of her life, although we should catch up with her. I, and then, you know, then, then Bill Hagen showed up and Bill Hagen said, I'm putting 1090 back on the air and I want to take the podcast that you guys have been doing. And I want to actually air it on 1090 in your old time slot. Great, Bill. Awesome idea. So when we went back to our advertising partners, particularly, I'll give you an example. I went to Tori Holistics and I said to Ruthie, Ruthie, are we worth more to you? And will you pay us more if we're on radio in addition to just podcasting? And she's like, hell yeah, because we want you guys to tell everybody, not just about Tori Holistics in San Diego, but Mammoth Holistics, because you have so many listeners in LA and so many of those people go to Mammoth. So we added radio as a distribution platform. Hagen calls me and says, we're adding TV. So hey, what? I know. Huh? Think about what we're doing here. This like is smart TV? Not like really. Ca like, cast like we're casting YouTube yeah. for something? No, no, no. You, mean, you mean TV TV? Like cable television, like on a box. Yeah, like old school cable <laughs> TV. Right, An old hot day. Yeah, now, now some people have old school cable TV, but they still, but they use an app on their smart TVs. Some people still have boxes hardwired connected to their televisions. So think about what what we're talking about here. Just from a this is you know because we're all involved in. It, I say all, meaning the great friends, dude. We're gonna go from YouTube and Facebook and Apple and Spotify and Stitcher and Google Play. We're going to go from the two video streamings and the and the audio podcasting platforms. Then we're going to have radio on 1090, which we got right now. And now we're adding cable TV. And all that's happening is this. The podcast is being repurposed on radio and soon on cable television. And I'd love to say that we're these great innovators. But it's just all happening around us is what I'm saying, you know? This Bill guy, he's a real uh, go-getter, huh? He is a real ball buster, isn't he? I mean, he is just, he crushes this guy. Yeah, man. The, uh, Bill, had a, Bill had a vision and a plan for all of this. And he's just, step by step, he's getting it done. Bang, 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 as the bang, great bang, Jim bang. Lamley would say. Bang, bang, bang. All right, don't give more? him too much. Don't, bang. Don't, don't give him too much credit. All right. I don't want to build up his ego too much. All right. It's still 51% us and 49% him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, listen, as the, as the talent, you, you always got to take more credit than the people behind the scenes. It's the way it is. We're the coach and the quarterback. He's the general manager. He gets credit, but after we get credit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we were talking, you're you going to give details or that's for a later date. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to give details as to what channel. Yeah, that's smart. And I'm not going to give details as to where, but he here's what I will say. If you're in Santa Barbara, if you're in L.A. Orange County. Orange County, San Diego, we're going to be on cable TV. We're going to take this radio broadcast and this podcast, and we're going to take the video and we'll air it on television at night. I think it's 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday. Yeah, like a one-hour show. And we'll take the best of the podcast, and it'll literally be a YouTube show on cable TV. This segment. Oh, we're not doing be. like we're not doing like the, <laughs> we're not doing like the Tonight Show. 
with Johnny Carson. We're not going to, you know, sit behind a desk and interview people that style. I would love to do that. I would love to do that. But, uh, you know. Can we do whatever we want on that show? Anything we want to do. Oh, boy. Listen, I need to start making some calls about wardrobe. Tough shed. You hear that, Tough shed? You hear that? TV, Tough shed. TV. Yeah. So, I listen, I look forward to the day of, of advertising to everybody in the radio business. We're the only people in America that are on radio, cable TV, YouTube, YouTube Facebook, Facebook, and all these. Like, we're literally going to be on 10 different platforms. TV, radio, YouTube. It's, you know Facebook. what's easier? What's that? You know what's easier to go to a sales, a sales meeting or whatever, advertisers? Ask them, which platform do you use? Great, we're on there. That's all. Yeah. 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 Oh, I don't I, it'll be a, I don't listen to AM radio. Great. You watch TV? Yeah. We're not on oh, we're on TV now too. We the oh, it'll be shorter list to tell people what we're not on. Right. right. That's the point. Yeah. It's like that which platform exactly do you which, which platform do you prefer to to uh to advertise on? And they're like TV. We'll be like, Great, we're on TV. They're like, No, 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 not like YouTube. We mean actual television, you know, where people are sitting in their homes and they just flip on the TV and it's super easy. Yeah, we're on that. You can DVR us. Mm. Yeah. Mm. How about that? Good times. All right. Hey, um, listen, let me uh let me have a minute and then I'm gonna uh then I'm gonna talk about this Deion Sanders thing that we got into oh. unexpectedly. So um real quickly, let me talk about my man, Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. He was on yesterday. He was great. Gary is doing something for us that he doesn't even know how much he's helping us because what we're able to, to do is incorporate him into a conversation and then in the middle of it all go, Oh, here's the deal on interest rates. Here's the deal on the mortgage lending industry. Here's what's going on out there in real estate. Great. Right back into some Aztec basketball. And he's jumping right in. It's like, he's a fourth host of the show, which is fun. And he is loving it because it's like, dude, he used to be under this intense pressure, like get it done in 60 seconds. You know, <laughs> it was really like 40 that's because how, that's he how. would intro him and then outro him. So it's like 40 seconds. Yeah, that's how you used to yell at him. Get it done. Well, the sales guys would be all pissed off because other uh, other clients would call and go, "Why is Gary Cooper on the air for two minutes? You know, how much does he pay?" And um, and Gary wanted to deliver his message, not because he's an egomaniac, it's just because he knows how to deliver it. So anyway, it's really cool. You need to call him 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299. If you're looking to refinance, if you're looking to get into home ownership, maybe you want to sell at what is considered the height of the market. Dude, you need to call Gary Cooper. He's an expert. He can help save you a bunch of money. Yesterday, you you were talking about panic meter with the Lakers, and I told you, you just throw it away. And yeah. Gary came on and also talked about, I'm not trying to create a, a panic in the market. I have more of a panic meter about the market after talking to Gary than I do about the Lakers now. Yeah, because, I feel like I need to hurry up. Yeah, because what's happening is home prices are rising and the interest rates are rising simultaneously. So it was one thing when the interest rates were going low, 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 and the home prices were going so high because you were like, oh, I can buy more because I'm going to pay less. But now what's happening is the prices are still moving up in the home prices. LA last week uh, reported that over the course of the last month, rather, um, up 13.7%. That's crazy in a month, right? Crazy. So, so as the home prices are going up, the interest rates are creeping up as well. So now you might actually find yourself buying less than you wanted and paying a little bit more. So you got to call him. You got to you got to let Gary talk you through this, okay? I know you probably are panicking, huh, Alex? Well, no, because I have Gary on my side. So, well, but I'm I know you want to. You want to? I am a little. Now I'm like more like in a hustle mode. Like I think I have to hurry. Now. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So listen, we were, uh, we were talking right before the last break and I don't even know how this came up other than I think I was saying that I'm going to buy some, uh, Deion Sanders was part of the draft class that Burt Grossman is not in the hall of fame, but everybody else is in the hall of fame. Okay. That's what happened. So last night, Browner and Burt had an interview with Tony Mandarich who, you know, he, old school football fans will remember this guy was like this sensation coming out of Michigan state front page of, uh, the cover of sports illustrated, no shirt, just gigantic beast. And he was going to be the can't miss prospect of all offensive linemen. And he was drafted number two overall. And everybody in the top 10 of the draft that year, uh, made it to the hall of fame other than Mandridge, who was a giant bust and Burt, who had a good career, but not hall of fame career. 
that picture on the cover of Sports Illustrated of Mandrich, now that you know how steroided out of his face he was, Browner, like, look at how puffy he is, you know? Like, look how gigantic and puffy this guy was back then when they put him on the cover of SI. Look at look at the size of him, dude. That's a that's a 22-year-old college kid, just by the looks way. Like, look at him. Looks like the mountain from Game of Thrones. Yeah. That's, he he's actually said he had cycled off of it because of the uh, combine, so he could take the P-test and then got back on it. Yeah. So we were talking about this, and, and Deion Sanders was the fifth pick in that year's draft. And I said how much I love Deion Sanders, and Browner right away – put Deion Sanders into the same bucket with LeBron James. Instant hate. <laughs> I would no, Just no instant hatred. Yeah, it's true. I would I would listen. There are two there are probably two people that you will say to me that I will immediately give you a reaction. Jesse Jackson, not a fan, and LeBron. But it's because of the people around LeBron. LeBron's a great basketball player, one of the greatest players of all time. What? Look. What? I just wanted to make problem? sure. Just wanted to make sure you said that. I actually, it was like my I never ears. I feel like my ears just like buzzed because you complimented LeBron. I'm sorry, Deion Sanders, bro. I had enough. I'm sorry. What have you had enough? Uh, of? Just the self promotion, bro. Yeah. You're coaching. You're coaching kids now. Mm -hmm. You're coaching. You're coaching kids, mm -hmm. and I get it. Most of it is recruiting, but if you get your stuff stolen, you're a rich guy. You'll get it back. Because we've all had stuff go missing. I'm guilty of this. I go, I lose something. I go, somebody stole it from me. No, dude, you just, you put it somewhere. Somebody else picked it up to put it somewhere safer because you've had stuff stolen before, by the way, which was returned to you. Like, don't pout wait, and so, whine. So, so wait, so was his stuff not stolen? No. No, it he, wasn't. He doubled down and said it was stolen. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I heard him yesterday on an interview with Keyshawn Johnson, and he did talk about his stuff having been stolen, and the guys who stole it actually did return it once they, once this kind of got out. I mean, that's what I had heard. The first time he had something stolen, this is true. He had something stolen from his car at Jackson State when he first got there. People found out who it was they stole from, and they brought it back to him and apologized. Mm -hmm. This particular time, after his first win as a head coach, mm -hmm. he put his stuff, he secured his stuff somewhere. It wasn't as secure as it should have been. Someone from his camp moved said stuff. He didn't know that they moved it and thought that it was stolen because he had something previously stolen from him Here's before. His, uh, and, sorry to cut you off. This is just the exact no, no, quote from, from Dion. Said, uh, he posted this on social media. Whomever putting out the lie that my belongings wasn't stolen is lying. He did get them back, but he's saying that they were stolen, not misplaced or taken by a staff member. And he says he says that one of the people on his staff witnessed the crime. Right. So it was okay, a woman okay. that couldn't fight the guy off. Okay. So look. So look. Let Let's slow down here for a second. I do I'm not. Mad. I I don't. Oh, I know. I really don't want to. It's not about for me the stolen goods. Okay. Me neither. Okay. No. Me neither. So, me neither. So but your hate to it's prime time. Yeah, what, what, why you got so much hate for this guy? Because I'm going to tell you, when you tell me why you got so much hate for him, I'm going to reverse it on you and tell you why I've got so much love for him. Go ahead. What, look, what Deion Sanders is doing at Jackson State is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. His 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 personality, his star, his star power, taking it to an HBCU to bring awareness to those athletic programs to build up the financial uh, uh, uh the uh, viability of them that's fantastic but Deion Sanders also tried this at the high school level and it was a disaster and a lot of people got in tried trouble what? except for Deion Deion Sanders once ran a school called Prime something I can't remember the full name of the school mm -hmm. but he was he ran a school mm -hmm. and that school absolutely broke every rule possible for a school and so the kids who got screwed over because of this got more trouble headed their way than the actual Deion Sanders, the person who was in running the school whose name was attached to all this. So again, I'm looking at, I don't, I, I, I do remember him. Like <laughs> I do remember him having a school and kind of like, um, you know, like one of those private schools where, yes. where it's like just a basketball factory. 
Like I do remember, the, but I don't know about everybody getting in trouble. So I want to learn more about this. So he had a football factory similar to they have basketball factory. So he basically created the same thing for football. Okay. So what happened? And it was what, done, what it was, it was done it was done illegally. The school the kids the school was not accredited. Okay. So all the cred, the kids couldn't go to college because the, the credits didn't count. The hours, the, the grades were useless. Well, I mean, I I don't know. Listen, I got to look this stuff up. You got to give me a second. Go ahead. No, go up. ahead. Go ahead. Gotta, go ahead. Alleged. Let's do this. Allegedly. Right. Allegedly, cuz I don't want them to take our video down. Well, no, no, no. It's, not, it's not that. It's just like I, I mean, here's the thing. Let me let me tell you why I love Deion Sanders. Let me flip it on you. Do it. So first of all, I was listening to an interview he gave yesterday with Keyshawn Johnson on ESPN Radio. A few things he said that really resonated with me. The first one was about him coaching at a historically black college. Because you know that Deion Sanders interviewed for the head football coaching job at Florida State, his alma mater. You know that, right? Yes. And according to Dion, he thought he presented a really, really brilliant plan for his alma mater. And they chose not to hire him. Okay. Um, being a TV star on the NFL network looks like fun for Dion, but it's kind of like what you were talking about earlier with, with Tiger or Alex Smith, you know, in their heart, who are they in Dion Sanders, heart for all the prime time and the flash and the suits and the hall of fame. Yeah. He loves football, loves coaching, loves the game. When he was on the radio yesterday with Keyshawn, he said something to me that really resonated, which was, Keyshawn, I'm getting to coach our people. I'm getting to help our people. I thought, that is so cool sounding. Like, like black man who became rich and famous, who wants to coach, would like to coach at Florida State, but they didn't want him. So now I get to go and coach this school, these kids. And because of my name and my fame, I might actually, over the next four or five years, I might be able to take this school that plays mid, mid should I call it mid-major, maybe even less than mid-major college football. I would call it less than mid-major, yeah. Okay. And maybe I could do here at Jackson State, what others have done, which is elevate the program, get better players, play at a higher level. And then, by the way, what else am I doing? I'm helping future generations of black men um, because they came to this school. They're involved in the culture and the history. They're going to be future leaders. They saw me come give back. Uh, maybe one of these guys will own an NFL team. Maybe they'll own an NBA team. And I, I really thought he, he said a couple of things. One, I'm getting to coach my people, our people is the way he said it. Two, um, somebody, Keyshawn asked him about, you know, all people talking about him and everybody's saying things about him. People like Browner. And you know what he said? I love this Browner. <laughs> I'm not here to serve a man or a woman. I can't please every man or woman out there. I'm here to serve God, man. That's right. I'm here to serve God. And I thought that was pretty cool. And then lastly, when asked about, you know, maybe taking off because he'll get a head coaching job somewhere else, I don't know. He sounded like, hey, I'm I'm kind of into this. I'm having a good time with this right now. So I don't know why you hate Deion Sanders so much. I happen to love <laughs> Deion Sanders. My, my by the way, my love for Deion Sanders goes back a little while. You know, after he won the Super Bowl, I, I think with the 49ers, his first Super Bowl that he won, he was interviewed. Um, and I remember him saying that he thought that when he won a Super Bowl, which was his life's dream, that everything in his life was going to be perfect. And do you know that he tried to commit suicide? Like, I didn't know this, uh, but this is what he talked about. He's like, I got to the top. I got that Super Bowl trophy. I had fame, fortune, and the championship that I wanted. And when I got there, I thought life was going to be perfect. And it just didn't feel perfect at all. Nothing was different. I thought it was going to be different. It wasn't. And he actually like was suicidal. And um, I don't know, man. I just have a great love for Deion Sanders. I don't know what your problem is, Browner. I come think on. That Deion Sanders needs to come out with more music. First of all, I think those music videos of the '90s were fantastic, and he needs to bring those back. '90s music with all the stuff that got stolen. He just rocked it all in a music video with like. Girls and it, what is it? Wasn't he like shirtless or had like a, a like a like a, a button down with no buttons buttoned? 
Like that's the best. A vest. It was a vest. That's a beautiful yeah. thing, man. That needs to come back before. I don't, all this other stuff you guys are talking about, I have no idea. Prep, Prime Prep Academy, coaching yep. my people, all that stuff. I don't know. What you're, I know Prime Time is an entertainer. Well, he needs to bring back the entertainment. That's my thought here. <laughs> Everything that Deion Sanders is doing, I will repeat, at Jackson State is fantastic for HBCUs, and I hope more former football players of magnitude follow suit. That does not erase what he did at the high school level. He's because so mad everything, about everything, dude. I know, man. Every, so mad. Everything, mad everything, everything. Everything that you're saying about what he's doing at Jackson State was the same thing that he was intending to do at the high school level, was coach our kids instead of our people, our kids, to be better men, to have better futures. And it was a disaster. Well, I mean, I will say one thing. You know, yesterday in this interview, you know what was interesting? He said to Keyshawn, he goes, you know, Keyshawn, if there's a kid in L.A. that I'm recruiting, he goes, I'm going to be calling you to help. And I was like, hey, Prime, that is so blatantly against the NCAA rules. Dude, you shouldn't be saying that on the radio. (laughs) <laughs> and, and thus it begins oh man all right listen very interesting Burt grossman around the corner who apparently wants to air me out will let's find out why stick around all right everybody uh it is time now for big bad Burt grossman to join the show as he does on wednesdays <sighs> although I was watching a lot of these Twitter highlights last night of Browner and Bert interviewing, interviewing Tony Mandrich and Bert <laughs> cracking me up because Bert tells Mandrich, Hey, I saw that picture of you on sports illustrated way back in the day. And you were so big and ripped. I get out of the shower and I'm like, look at me. Like, like you, you look what like happened? the inc- incredible Hulk. We're both. How are we both first round draft choices? Look at you. Look at me. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, that, that, that's true. And then I spelled dysmorphia wrong on body dysmorphia, I noticed, too. That's what you get for texting and, and drinking. But, yeah, I remember because, you know, he was the number one offense lineman. I was the number one defense lineman. And then his Sports Illustrated came out, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, and then, uh, you know, you're showering, and all of a sudden you get out, and you catch that view of yourself, and you're like, oh, come on. And that Sports Illustrated sitting right there, and I'm like, it was just terrible. I haven't been able to take my shirt one. off since. Yeah, well, that's what Bert said. I haven't taken my shirt off since. Hey, um, were you really, I don't, you were the number one D lineman ranked in your class in your. In your <laughs> Why are you so surprised? Was he not good in college or what? Yeah, you played he with him. He was, <laughs> right. he, was, he was good, but I, I just, it's amazing. You know, like I, was it speed? Was it moves? Was it sack totals? I'm just trying to remember why. Why so? Wow. Thanks. Thanks. I appreciate that. You know, usually when you're the first D lineman drafted, you're the, the number one in that class. I don't, I don't know if you got that in your extensive you, yeah, free agency yeah. career when you were competing yeah. with John Carney, but that's how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> and did, Bert, did you like crush it at the combine when they asked you like, are, are you a dog or a cat? Did like, did, is that yeah, what you those are real out? hard? Qu- yeah. yeah. And you know, it's really scary when you get the wonder lick and you see some of these scores that, you know, the intelligence tests, and then you actually go take the test and you're like, this is like a middle school exit exam. It was just, <laughs> and you see these people get like five, sixes and tens. And it's like, wow, that, that was the sh- most shocking part. I think was, was that part. Um, you know, I, I remember they had this other one with the wonder lick where you, it was almost like sink my battleship where they'd ask you to play stuff and they're facing one way and you're facing the other. And you're supposed to just figure out that it's obviously opposite because you're sitting across or whatever he says, it's an opposite to you. It was just easy, goofy things like that. that You're just like, how do you fail this test? I'll tell you right now, what I'm really loving about the the Browner and Burt show is I do love hearing you talk to a lot of these, you know, old school ball players from back in the day. Um, Cause it's not like they're too old. Like where you're like, I don't remember them. You're like, Oh, I remember that guy. And I just think the stories are fascinating. So I would encourage you guys to keep it going because the show is really starting to sound good and look good. And uh, all the graphics uh, good to Toby's. Uh, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> oh, I heard the news about Woodhead. Stop, just stop. It's, you, you know, you're so transparent, man. It's good timing that he likes your show now. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Right when, right when the two others that he was loving decided to leave, then all of a sudden, wow. Okay. Mm. Right, great, Scott. I didn't, can't see through that. That's a wonderlick test question right there, too. <laughs> Mm. Uh huh. So, uh-huh. what do you what do you what do you think about this this Woodhead situation? I haven't talked about it on the air. Why did they leave? 
Um, well, misunderstding. Oh, tell yeah. us. Come on, be I transparent. Got, I I got a call from uh, I got a text from Danny Woodhead. Yeah, and it was like, hey man, um, why is it that our podcast, the video portion of their podcast, is on YouTube on the channel, which we agreed they would they would be on our channel, so that there was built in audience. Why is it that your sponsors, Corky's and, and, you know, Total T and why are your sponsors underneath our video? Those aren't our sponsors. And I said, I didn't even realize it. Let me take a look. So I did. And it was an oversight. You know, we, I told these guys, I'm like, guys, we're flying by the seat of our pants here. We're, we're experimenting, you know, and Toby McDonald, who was, was helping produce their show because they're sending just a zoom file. Toby's the one jacking it up and making it look sweet. So they were like, well, dude, that's, those aren't our sponsors. And, that was it? And, well, no, it was, it was like, hey, you, you, we're former NFL players. We have a certain amount of fame and, and influence. And if your sponsors are underneath our video, that intimates to the audience that those are our sponsors. Those aren't our sponsors. We're not making money from that. You're making money off of us. And I was oh, like, okay. I was like, dude. Well, what would they, so they both live in some frozen tundra in, in Nebraska, right? Right. Yeah. So like total T is all, you know, about quality of life. And if you're concerned about quality of life, you don't live in Nebraska. So what, who would confuse any of that? Or like, what, who would they have like tractor supply store? Who would be their sponsor? Well, I think John what Deere. they're John I, Deere. Yeah. I think what their point was, was that, look, we have to be protective of who we are as former NFL players. And oh, tell them to stop with themselves, please. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's a joke. It is? I think so, yeah. You don't think so? Well, what, what they said, they, we had a long conversation, me, Slauson, and Woodhead and their producer. And we had a long conversation. I explained to them, because our original deal was, we'll take your podcast and we'll put it on 1090 on the radio. And they were like, awesome. Didn't, zero dollars to them. They didn't have to, it was nothing. Yeah. And then it was, we'll take your video, which they weren't doing, and we'll air it on our YouTube channel. And that'll get more people watching. Cause we'll be able to send push notifications. So we're going to get your small podcast, which is awesome. We're going to get it onto radio and we're going to get it onto our YouTube channel. We're going to give you guys a lot of instant audience. And then eventually when we can sell it, we'll split it. And everybody's like, okay, cool. It was a handshake agreement. It wasn't in writing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when they saw the sponsors on their YouTube video, they were pissed and because they were recording their segments and there were radio commercials playing in between, mm -hmm. they, they felt like Bill Hagen and 1090 were monetizing their fame. Mm. Their fame. Mm. Right. Because, because I think we need to unionize around here. I think we need to unionize Brown. Or what do you think? Talent wise, your management, Scott, you can't be part of it. I don't, I don't agree with that. I, I get what you're saying, but. I mean, the reality is they're, you're in the NFL. You don't really have any value as a retired player unless you're Tom Brady or a Hall of Famer or something else. But, I mean, players, you're, I mean, you're local. You're, your brand is local pretty much if you played and you were a good player. But if you move out of the local area, what, what do you expect? Like, well, I, I, here's what I thought, Bert. I, I thought, look, you know, I don't want to get involved in a lawsuit with you guys, okay? <laughs> That's like the last thing I need. Um Look, and I even said to them, I go, guys, there are podcast networks out there that would love to have you guys. I'll make introductions for you gladly. Um, but we're kind of, we're new to doing what we're doing. And if you guys think that you're like big, I, cause I, I didn't want to say something like, dude, your YouTube has 400 views, bro. It, it's not like we're making a ton of money yeah. because there's a Corky's ad underneath the 400 views. I was surprised because I thought if anything, putting their podcast on radio and the ridiculous amount of work it was taking Toby to make their, their YouTube show look bomb. Cause by the way, here's what we provided radio, YouTube production, and then social media promotion. We did all of that for them for free. Yeah. And they came back to me and said, you're profiting off of our name. And I said, guys, fellas, Let's all go in our opposite directions. Let's shake hands and, and be, you know, acquaintances. It took Toby longer to put it up, pretty it up and put it on YouTube than it did for them to make it, if that makes any sense. It like, may, right, because they would record. It would take them an yeah. hour to do the show. It right. would literally take Toby like five, six hours of work 
So yeah. at the end of the day, what I hear is that Monday night is open. Wow. <laughs> See how Alex bottom lines things, Bert? Yeah, I would like to. Well, you should get Hacksaw on there. I saw his Twitter poll. It might have been the most – and I'm pretty tasteless, but that was pretty tasteless. <laughs> That that was. Did you see it? Yeah, I saw it. What'd you think of it? Well, I, <laughs> should listen, I put it up when, on the when, screen? Oh, yeah, please. Uh, <laughs> when people when people heard about Tiger Woods' car accident yesterday, many people jumped to conclusions like, "What could have happened? Could it have been drugs? Could it have been booze? Could it have been something scandalous in some way?" I mean, that that's what people jump to the conclusion because he's that famous and he has that kind of background. Hacksaw put up a poll on Twitter. Hacksaw's mini poll, the Tiger Woods tragedy. So many things could have happened in that crash. All of them bad. Which would you have feared? Oy vey, what kind of question is this? Which would you have feared? And then he actually says in the tweet, the almighty was on his side. Which would you have feared? Tiger was hit by an oncoming car, ejected during a rollover, trapped in a fire. This is Hacksaw's tweet. Bert, explain this to me. I can. All he's missing, I thought he was going to put in there, uh, I was caught with a transvestite hooker in the seat next to him. I mean, it was just, it was so absurd. It was just like, but it's Hacksaw. So it's, you know, Makes you're sense. just looking at it. I'm like, what, what, what is this? This is mm. just, I mean, it was bizarre. It was just, a, it was just bizarre. Yeah. I, I mean, Kellen put- Winslow Jr., maybe I would put that kind of tweet out, but, but not Tiger Woods. <laughs> Oh Come my on, God. Man. I had to, I had to explain. I don't even to get my the girlfriend. Question. Wait, wait. I, I, I just want to say one thing about Kelvin Winslow Jr. Cause we haven't talked about it on the show. I had to explain to my girlfriend the other night. She's like, what's the story on this Kellen Winslow Jr. Thing. And I started to read to her what he had done. Not mm-hmm. no longer what he had been accused of doing, what he had done. And from an old lady to a young girl, to a homeless lady, I, I was like, this guy is freaking a sick, sick guy. Well, you know, it, when he was when he was playing, nobody would room with him because he would watch porn the whole time and like openly masturbate in the hotel room. They said when he'd travel on the plane, he'd be watching porn. When he was at meetings, he'd be watching porn, just nonstop and just. I mean, you know, the first one broke. I think it was he was in like a a mall parking lot and he was you know masturbating in there, and some lady called the cops and. You know, by the time the cops got there, he wasn't, but he was still there. And he had like two jars of open Vaseline. <laughs> I mean, it was just, it's so bizarre. It's just, it's, it's, it's more bizarre than Hacksaw's pole. Yeah. Talk about humiliating though. I mean, like Kellen Winslow, the dad was such a legend in this town for so long. And um, he was never really a friendly, nice guy, to be honest. I mean, he no. was, he was very, um, I don't know. Did you have any experiences with him? I, mean, I don't mean to knock on Kellen senior. I, I just, what I'm saying is it's so embarrassing. You know, yeah. first year kid, when the kid graduated high school, do you know the story that he beat up somebody so bad that the kid was in was, his face was so mangled and they sued him. And it, part of his NFL contract went to this family. Cause this kid was, I mean, he, he was a, I didn't even know that. Oh God. He was a teenager who yeah, he went to Scripps ranch, right? Who beat Beat, not punched in the face, not got into it in the hallway. Beat the ever living crap out of a kid, busted up his whole face, butt bones and stuff. I mean, kids had problems his whole life. I feel you know as yeah, a dad. I mean, he got. I mean, at least he made the transmission or transition from beating up kids to beating his meat. Sorry, that was just tasteless. I was so hacksaw of you. It was. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't even. It only took I'm you 12 sorry. minutes and 20 seconds to go there. I know. I'm sorry. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't know. You know what? There's something wrong with me. There is. Hey, Bert. Um, let's let's flip it for a second here. So, um, Browner, me and Alex here, and me and Browner, we're going to push on this. We need a little help. Tell us what you think. Go ahead. So, with high school football getting set to return. Browner's biggest concern and kind of his his main reason for not being supportive of the return is because he thinks kids in underserved communities will not have the same um, advantages as the rich kids in North County. I agree. And so do I. So we said, what can we do to help? Mm-hmm. So right away, my man Howard Wright from Pro Kids, the golf academy, mm-hmm. he's like, we're in to help. OK. And um I know I can get computers to kids San Diego to help because I know a lot of these kids, we were talking to Ron Gladnick the other day, the kids from the inner cities, they stopped going to school in many instances because there were no sports to keep them 
activated in school. Yeah, so Futures we- Foundation in um, City Heights does the same thing. They'll give like free, you know, desktop computers to um, kids that need them. Same. So, okay. So we got pro kids to help. We got computers to kids, San Diego to help. I want to get with uh, feeding America, San Diego, because Browner says a lot of these kids don't eat, you know, they eat one meal a day, maybe. And it's provided for, for them at school at lunch. So what we're saying is, and this is where we need your help. Mm-hmm. Any coaches or athletic directors, parents that say, Hey, we're in this, what is considered an underserved community. Mm-hmm. We want our kids to come back and play football, but we want them to come back and play as safely as possible. Here are the things that we need. Mm-hmm. Those are the things that we want to hear about so that we can help provide them. What do you think about this? I think it's great. Absolutely. I don't, and you know, there's plenty of places. The high school sports association um, in San Diego is another one that would do it. They, you know, do all the sports, you know, obviously Paul Rudy, you're on his show in the morning. You took my spot. Um PPR is coming back for the shortened season. So that would, that would be a, a, a good partner too. But, you know, even, I mean, if I were you at, the, at this point, I would go see Nathan Fletcher and, you know, they have the County grants that they can give for things just like this, each supervisor, you know, up to 25 grand. And, and, you know, he's somebody that probably has to show some good faith in this whole thing at this point politically. So, you know, that'd be another step. I mean, they're, they're, able to give, you know, 250,000 each supervisor. I mean, you get all four of them or five, you'd be great. All right. So that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Brown, are you taking all this in brother? Yeah. I had no idea that that was even possible. That's a great starting point. Cause I mean, and we all know I support Nathan Fletcher. And we When's know PPR start. Uh, when the first uh, game Ron starts? said his Ron said he, they play the sixth. Then it'll start the sixth. As soon as, as soon, I mean, we start when the first game starts, but who knows when that is again? Well, they, yeah, they got yeah. Tory Pines against uh, against Cathedral, and you know, there's a lot of D1 athletes on the field at the same time. That'll probably be our game, and too. probably probably be a really okay. So, so I think Alex here, Bert's on to a great idea, which is the first thing we really ought to do is we ought to get Paul Rudy on the show, maybe tomorrow or Friday, and talk to Paul about partnering up in some way and getting the PPR to have like a full screen graphic that would say, Hey, if your school needs our help, communicate with us, let us know what it is. And we're going to start to help be it through this organization, this one, and this one. And that's what we're going to do, you know? So we got to get, and yeah. And, and definitely follow up on the, on the supervisor thing. Cause you know, like I said, there's five and they, represent each part of the county and each one of them have you know community block grants that they can give and this is perfect because everyone has a ton of high schools in their district so it's not you know a partisan thing um so, but but if i were to get a twenty five thousand dollar grant from the county just hypothetically no, each su- each supervisor you could you know theoretically get 25 grand from each supervisor and, and get no, no, 125 but, but, grand but what am i but serious question here like what am i asking them to, are they am i asking them to give my business 25,000 cuz i'm going to be pushing that out and donate or maybe they want to give it to a 501c3 probably a 501c3 and then and then you just do it as you know we're going to buy mass you know testing um you know i i mean at some point as much money as you can get to get you know to make it safe um again i don't know I don't know what the protocols are going to be, but they're going to cost money, obviously. Right. And, yeah. you know, it's different yeah, if you're a cathedral or, or if you're a school down south. Yeah. Ron said that they're going to have to bus once a week to go get tested. I was like, that seems counterintuitive. Good to luck. Push, to pack kids in a bus to go get tested. Yeah. And, and even so, that, so that's another point. You just say you're going to do it because you want to have a weekly testing center at every, you know, low-income high school. Okay. This is a great idea. So we, we got to do this, though. We got to help because um, – it's really all that we can do is, is say, look, um, if you support these kids coming back and there's a million reasons to support it, mm-hmm. um, there are probably an equal number of reasons to say, yeah, but it could be really dangerous. <clears throat> could be. Although, yeah, well, yeah, listen, because we're what Bert is saying, like the simple fact that these block, these block grants exist and this program hasn't already been used to create either a vaccination or a testing site at underserved or underprivileged schools. It's a travesty. Well, I think we're also forgetting it's not just football. Yeah, it's every every sport sport can come back. It's not just every outdoor sport. Hey, hey, Browner, Browner, don't have such high expectations of government. You know what I I mean? I I, I, I don't. like let the people who are the real leaders in the community step up. And that's, that's guys like you're looking at them. 
Okay, there he is, Burke Roseman. <laughs> the there 19th most powerful Peter. person in San Diego via 2017, mofo. Right. Yes, <laughs> we're not bringing that up, though. You're, you're looking at him right there, the head coach <laughs> of the strike force. Yeah. Okay? My man, Burke Roseman. That's a leader is what that is, Brown. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Listics up behind you. Am I getting any money from them? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Porky's <laughs> behind you. Manscaped. You got it. What, am I getting any of this cash? No, in fact, I got to lose the Manscaped ads on all of our TVs. I do. Uh, you know were, who's you know who's doing a Manscaped ad that I went it yeah. is now. Jump the shark. Yeah, yeah. you know Alex who I'm Cruz, talking about. Yeah, yeah dude. Cruz, uh, yeah, ain't got no hair. Even worse. When I when when the radio station shut down, OJ started doing Bluetooth commercials. You remember my old Chew It and Blue? <laughs> OJ, and I'm like, man, yours truly. Here was Blue Chew. These Just are my saying. people right here. These, this, Just this is my tribe. Speaking of stuff getting stolen, sorry. Oh God! All right, let Wrong me do segment. this. Really? Let me do this. Really? Bert, you have a little bit more time here. Yeah, I got plenty okay. of time. All right, let me set this up for you, and then we'll bring it back in the next segment. I have a man crush on Deion Sanders, and I love what Deion Sanders is doing at a We're historic. Going back to that, huh? Oh God! Here we go. <laughs> Browner here, on the other hand has nothing but hate in his heart for Deion Sanders. And right. I would like for you to, Bert, if you don't mind, adjudicate this I conversation. I will. Okay. Bert Grossman being brought to you by the Total T Clinic, totaltclinic.com. 15 minutes, you're in and out. And I'm telling you right now, you're going to be healthy. You're going to be virile. You're going to be strong. You're going to be clear-minded. And you are going to love it. You can get your life back, the young stud that you were at the yeah. Total Clinic. You total know what? That's the other thing I want to talk to you about, man. We got to do – how come I don't do a spot or make a okay. jingle like – I want to do a jingle like Quirky's for Total T. What do you think? All right. I like that idea. Hold that thought. All right. Let Stick me hold around. It. More Burt Grossman coming right back. All right, more with Burt Grossman here on Kaplan and Crew, along with Grande Alejandro Padilla repping the 805 and the Basquiat expert from the podcast yeah. shed. Yeah, Big well, Brown see, in the wait, house. You know what I like? He's got, he went to Home Depot and got the wood paneling carpet and hung it on the wall. That's like a carpet yeah. I saw at Lowe's. Oh, dude, no, wait a second. Browner, give really Browner good. credit. Give right. Browner credit. That's not you know, right. No carpet, bro. What you mean? You see my yeah, hand? Right. I you can see my see hand it. smooth. That's called, that. that's called linoleum, man. Yeah, bro. What you talking about? Don't can you do it all the way to the floor? You got it like I ran push. out. I ran no, out. Right. <laughs> no, no, Bert, don't you get it, dude? Look, Bert Grossman is here, and, and Browner over his right shoulder has his Basquiat because he's an art connoisseur. Yeah. And over his left shoulder. on screen. He's created like, a, like I think they call it, is it called Wayne's coating? Is that what that is? Like where the bottom half of the wall is like wood? Or, so Browner's <laughs> got this like paneling from the 70s yeah, up basement. over his one shoulder. And then he's got the, the podcast shed down below, but it sort of looks kind of oh. artsy next to the Basquiat. You should have gone awesome. like, you should have gone like white wood, Browner, to match like our background. Like some oh, ship lap. You got some avocado shag rug down there too? No, dude, no, no, man. I I ran out of I ran out of what I was using to, <laughs> I see, to put I see. this up. That's why you can only see a quarter of the wall. Uh -huh. All right, uh, Browner and Bert. Uh, let me ask you guys both a question because I know Browner's answer, but Bert, I want your answer, and then I'll get to this Dion thing. So now that you've outed me over this whole Woodhead Slauson controversy, yeah, which I was going to let quietly go off into the night. Uh, I bet you were. Um. And you obviously don't agree with them. You you think that their position is as former NFL players, they're not Tom Brady, they're not Drew Brees, and the notion that people are kind of trying to take from them because of their their reputation as football players. You, you think that's exaggerated? Is that what you're saying? I do. If you're not in this market, I mean, neither one of them live in this market. They're not involved with the community, so I, I don't really know what the value is. But you know, those guys, if it's Tom Brady or if it's you know any any quarterback or, or Hall of Famer. Yeah, you have some cachet, but, you know, now it's pretty much – you have to earn it. I mean, I don't know how you think after four weeks you can demand everything of a – you know, you have to build your show just like everything else. Yeah, I think that for, for Danny and for Matt, what they thought was twofold. One, their videos being on our page was generating money for us and not for them. Not true. Mm -hmm. And two, they – felt like the radio commercials were generating money for the radio station and they weren't getting a piece of that and they didn't think that was fair and i had to also say again not really accurate fellas i mean this is a brand new thing it's a startup so they decided they wanted to go their own way and i 
I'm just hopeful that we all go our own way happily and peacefully. And I don't have to deal with some, you know, some lawsuit where it's like, Hey, they, they were making money off of us because. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think that'll be a lawsuit. All right. Good. I, I sure hope not. What, what do you, what would you get paid um, for 400 clicks on a, on a YouTube channel from a, anybody that was on there? Yeah. The I don't sense? think it would $4. Yeah. I know. I don't $20. think it, Yeah. So um, Bert, what about my total T jingle? So does Browner that? and Bert now have Mondays or is Mondays now just open? Let me ask you that question. Bert Browner wants to add, he wants to do more than one day a week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And your time might be very valuable. Mine's not? What the hell are you supposed to, what, yeah. what is that supposed to mean? What it means that's is you're already, shot. Browner, you're already on no. the clock. I think that's what yeah, he means. Like you're already and, here. And that's and true. you also and you you have been saying the whole time, like, I want more than Browner wants his own deal. I don't blame him. True. Okay? So, mm -hmm. so. Oh, you Browner, mean his own deal without me? You sell. No, out. this is before you, dude. We had a conversation you about this. Full sell out. Full disclosure. Before you even came into the picture, before he had the great idea of adding us together. How about that? I, I approached him about doing it myself. Wow. And that didn't necessarily go the way that uh, it worked out, but it ended up being better. Because to be 100% honest with you, I love having you on the show. No, I no. love... No, I'm you're being, being like serious. him now. You're being like no, Scott I'm being now. No. I'm, I'm being dead serious. Because to do the show by myself would have been a different look. It would have been a different energy. Having you do the show, it's created a lot of fun. It's created a lot of energy and a lot of humor. Way more humor than it would have been before. Mm. Because mm -hmm. Brown are not mm -hmm. that funny by himself, but with no, you. no, who is funny by himself? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, Burke Grossman being presented by the Total T Clinic, and you know he's actually being paid a little bit. You know, uh, bit. and Strike Force, but I haven't got paid for that. Even though Strike I got the Force. Deal. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. Oh man. wow. This is like these. Wait, like, what? He's, look at that. He's already. He's on his like second payment coming up, and he hasn't given us nothing. You're right. You know what? Any woodhead. <laughs> I hear you, Danny. <laughs> hey, hey. Why are you looking down, Alex? Oh my God! Uh, I'm, so I'm not hear you. Danny. What? I hear you. Call me. <laughs> I got nothing to do with either of these shows. I'm just here to yeah. instigate. Oh no, we can't. We can't even get paid for our own sponsors that we go out and get. Oh and look, what are you God. shuffling that's, papers, that's man? Scott, oh, no, this no, this is the problem. List. This is the problem, Scott. When you air everything on air, this is the problem. You can't call that on air. I have, no, I have no, I have no issue with it. It's just that you know what it is. It's it's kind of back to the same issue, which is you know, I got, I got so much bandwidth. You know, uh, it's limited. And um, if you Bert gets gets paid, it's auto paid. But then he brought in the Strike Force as a sponsor and said, okay, well, you know what. Um, we got to adjust a few things and I haven't done it. And then I have to go to the uh, accounting firm that we use and I have to tell them about these things. And it just, it just, mm -hmm. these things just, you hear this Browner? Mm -hmm. I don't think about them. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I had no idea. So you guys taking Mondays or what? Maybe I should do better. Maybe I should be a better businessman at this point. Hey, we need to look around these other podcast networks. He's going to introduce <laughs> Danny and Slauson to <laughs> yeah. help us out. Yeah. I wouldn't want to leave Total T because I just got my – you know, I just started those B12 shots. Why didn't you tell me about them earlier? How great are they? Man, good. What game changer. I'm going to go – Put with that in my jingle. I'm going to go there. This is what I was thinking, though. Look, if you had something on the back, Total T, think of like a 70s thing. I got like a cowboy outfit on. Like, like why are you laughing? <laughs> like the Marlboro Man. I'd go like four socks deep and I pack, you know, pack sock in my tight Wranglers. And then on top, it's like, don't four blame socks. me. Four yeah, socks. Four socks. Four. And then four. on top, it says, don't blame me, blame Total T. <laughs> you like it or no? Four <laughs> socks. Four. I'm going deep on that. It's got to show through them Wranglers. I'm going to have like Copenhagen outline on my back pocket. So you're an elephant. So, on the front. so you're an elephant now? Yeah. Well, okay. you, you got to play it up. Man. I'm just saying. Oh, okay. All I know don't is blame this. me, blame Total T. Uh, all I know is Bird is looking good, strong, healthy. Got yeah. a young, smoking hot girlfriend, fiance, and oh. uh, yeah, he's bringing his A game. And it's we're going to dinner Saturday night too. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, oh. what? Oh, oh man, what? Oh, here we go. Oh my here god, here we go. What did you just say, Bert? <laughs> it's Cosby. This gets even better. This is third what? party. Linda what? Welby set this up. <laughs> what did you just whoa. say? Oh, with Linda. With Linda, with Linda, Linda texted me and said, "Hey, we'd love to see you guys. We're going out with Scott and Rachel." And I'm like, "Oh, oh wow. 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 Rachel, are you kidding me?" Damn. Okay, Bert. I don't know if wow. you, I doubt you listen to this show. He didn't. He, Bert doesn't I, know about this. That's what makes this I great. I doubt you listen to this show. 
this was legitimately a conversation that we had on Monday about how Scott and his girlfriend operate with dinner reservations and how they For what six. they do. This is this is the backstory, Bert, because maybe you made obviously you made the list, so you're clear yeah. here. I made it through Linda. I didn't make it through well, him. He probably well, didn't even know it. This is the way that the Kaplan uh, Rachel household works, I guess. They make a reservation for six. Mm -hmm. They have a list of people they want to invite to this dinner of six. If X amount of people say no, they chop the reservation down to four. So they don't like find six people. They chop the reservations down to the point where they have chopped the reservation down to two, just him and Rachel. Mm-hmm. So it's basically the same as the pay structure for this show. Yes. And he chops us out. He chops us out till it gets down to just him. So on Saturday, they did this. And instead of me or Browner getting a text from Scott, like, hey, we got a reservation for six. Do you guys want? I have a fiance. I have a plus one. Browner yeah. is a man of the street. He could find one. No problem. Yeah. Um, instead of calling or texting us, hey, would you guys like to come to dinner with us? They just chopped the resi down to two. Rachel <laughs> hears this, mm -hmm. hits us up on Monday says i got a reservation for saturday would you are either of you this interested, saturday right are either yeah. of you are either of you interested in babysitting not and we, <laughs> and we took it and we took it as a joke <laughs> turns out there's it's a true. reservation for six with linda austin and uh -huh. now bert and the lady Tanya. Wow. wow. And you know what's funny? I got the reservation invite on Monday, too. It's a cold piece, <laughs> man. It's a cold piece. God. Hey, oh, oh, my Lord. Lord. By the way, I'm cutting this out, and I'm putting this on social, so you can see how cold-blooded you are, Scott. Scott, man, had cold the, Scott had the nerve to be like, no, these reservations are made later. No, this was made Monday. Yeah. Okay. Monday. All right. Woo. All right. All right. Now, wow. I'm going to attempt here. Browner, you what are you doing we got, Saturday? Dude, we got to get Rachel on the show. We got to get Rachel on the show. This, is, this can't stand. You guys have barked up the wrong tree. How's that? You barked up the wrong tree, I could, Wait, let me say so. This goes back to the exact same thing, your Halloween party that had no diversity whatsoever. If Browner wasn't African-American and Alex wasn't Mexican, you'd invite him. That's what I'm saying. Ooh, oh, no diversity wow, whatsoever wow. at that party. The closest wow. diversity you had that party was you being Jewish wearing bacon suit. That, that was the closest, but I, I know. Let me ask you a question. If there were 50 people at the party, mm -hmm. how many were men? Mm. That was probably half and half. Okay, that's diversity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, got me there. Gender diversity. All right, yeah, gender. Party. All right, let me tell you something. Browner, you're wow. barking up the wrong tree here, pal. Talk to me. Okay, this is all pure coincidence. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. No. Come on. Hey, the same, same way. Day, same no. everything, same number of no. people. We the had this conversation. He just told us the reservation was on Monday. We had yeah. this conversation right. he, what, earlier this week. What's okay. more of a coincidence? Huh? This, Scott, yeah. this, 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 this dinner reservation thing, or yeah. the fact that you now like Browner and Bircho that Woodhead and Wes Lawson are gone? <laughs> it's very coincidental. Okay, you're you're, 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 you're no, a no. horrible person. Scott. No, no. You're the dinner. The, the dinner, the and dinner, and we didn't get paid for strike force. Well, no. <laughs> you're a horrible person. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me just go down the dinner reservation, the Slauson thing, lying to us, you stealing their money from their advertisers, oh not paying Browner and I, and not inviting them to dinner. Oh my wow. God. That's what we're the that's greatest. This is it's the greatest bird segment ever. I gotta say that. Yeah. Come on. Okay, now hold on. I'm just gonna make this comment here. I'm telling you, Browner, you're barking up the wrong tree. He's going to so, blame Linda explain, right now. You know this, explain. Right? Yeah. You know he's going to blame this Linda right Linda. now. What do you mean blame us? Linda? What also a person we can Linda? get on the show to explain what happened. What do you mean? Okay. 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 So here's the deal. You can bring Linda on the show and you can ask her, Linda, did you organize a dinner and invite Scott and Rachel? <laughs> oh, Bert's calling her. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> And invite Linda, invite Bert. Hey, thank you for the uh, invite this week. Um, no, the Saturday speaker, one. Yeah. Speaker phone. Speaker. No, no speaker. No, speaker yeah. phone. Who said, whose idea was it? Speaker phone, Bert. Oh, Scott. Cool. Oh, really? Oh, there's yeah, nobody see? on there. I can't call. Yeah. Wait. Come on, call <laughs> you her. Know there's nobody on there. Call her. I'm not calling. We got eight I'm, minutes. I'm we got eight minutes. Call her. Uh, and, and Scott, don't lead her in your questioning. And, and oh, Scott is the ultimate leader of oh, yeah. Yeah, questions. Don't, yeah, don't do that. Just ask flat out. Hey, Linda, you remember that one time when you made reservations and you invited us to uh -huh. Monday? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Linda, Linda's smart enough. Six people. Mono. She's smart enough to go along with it. She's no like, way yeah, she yeah, 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 yeah. No way yeah, she's texting her right time. now. If you go with this, I'll pay for dinner. 
There's no way she answers FaceTime. I no, agree with that. No chance. I agree with that. She's like, why is he FaceTiming me? Yeah, it's exactly. Crazy. He must know. Yeah. No, you're mm-hmm. yeah. We are, so, we Bert, are, when yeah. did you got the text via Linda, the invitation I'll tell on you Monday? Tell you right now. By the way, I your think... wrist looks like you just did spring break in Cabo. You got so many <laughs> wristbands on. Wow. Do you like that? Yes. Midlife Great. crisis, man. Leave me alone. You and Ted Cruz in Cancun. <laughs> I'm having a midlife crisis, and this is what you do for me. Which Linda, is your mid- what, what, are you, what are you doing about this midlife crisis? Not Total team B12. I'm wearing, yeah, B12. And I'm wearing <laughs> <a> break. <laughs> All right, here's so here's my here's my story. Just so you guys know. Okay. My story is Linda said to me, "Hey, you all know- right, hold on. No, Monday. Look, can you see that, Alex? No, it's Monday. No. You can't see that. I, okay, so just read it. Read it. Read it. it. Well, I, I want to believe me. This is Monday." Monday at 8.53 a.m. Are you up for dinner Saturday night? Scott and his lady are meeting us for dinner at La Donna in OB. Can you guys join us? Would love to see you. Smiley oh, you know what, dude? Mask. You know what, dude? Brown, do you remember this little throwaway line? Me and the lady are thinking about heading south. You mother! <laughs> oh, my God! Oh, oh, my God! Yes, you did say that! So you already know! Oh, hey, dude, good catch! Wrong with you? Wow! Oh, he got what is wrong with you? today, bro? And I want my strike force money today. <laughs> he did, and we we can check. What? Oh man, we do uh-huh. this show well you after so eight fifty three. You are oh my god! You are so busted with that little comment of we're coming a little bit south. <laughs> oh, being a whole lot of south. <laughs> what? No, dog. You guys are getting it all. <laughs> it all, yeah, all, right. oh it all my it, god! It, it oh. all. It really does sound very incriminating. I it admit does. it. Does OJ? I, I, I admit it. Okay, <laughs> but but I gotta say, it's all a very strange coincidence. And turn that screen off. Those companies, I'm not getting paid for right now. Turn it off. <laughs> We're unionizing oh, this. The, all, right, what, all right, hold on, hold on. What's the coincidence, Scott? Oh, Tell okay, us here's the truth. Here, then. Here's the if, coincidence. If, if Burke got the text from Linda Welby at eight Monday morning, Monday, Monday morning, eight fifty three a.m. Tell us the coincidence. Okay, then. so we got five minutes left here. Plenty of time. The coincidence is that. Earlier this week, we talked about this idea of having a standing reservation for six. You, John, and you, Alex, seem very offended. You guys were like, we don't make the cut. Guys- I am now. I wasn't and, on Monday. And Alex is like, I just want the opportunity to say no. That's all. Just want the opportunity to say no, thank you. Browner was even further offended by my appearance in North Park a few weeks ago where I said, hey, guys, let's get together and have lunch. And I actually had to go to Costco that day. So I never contacted you guys about lunch. Although Alex had already told me he wasn't available. So it was me. You didn't want to go to lunch with even better. Cool. Go ahead. So now, (laughs) well, no, the goal Costco spending that strike force money. Uh (laughs) That's what he's doing. Yeah. (laughs) Buying computers with our strike force. Man. So, okay. So now um, we talked on Monday about the table of six Mm-hmm. And I did say that we were willing to head south. So we could come meet you guys, even though you had already known at eight fifty three in the morning. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, nope. yeah. You, you know what know. I see happening? You know well, what's going to happen? Though. Let it see what he's. Hold on, we're going to go through this whole supervisor thing and get like one hundred twenty five thousand dollars, and then all of a sudden Scott's going to have a new Lamborghini or something. You <laughs> go take that money too. Look, he's texting okay. Linda. Help me. Okay, wait. No, no, no help. No <laughs> help. help. No help. I'm going to try and FaceTime her again because I just asked her if she was around by text. And she said she is, and I'm going to Facetime her again because when I really look at the how do we know you're here, not you're not texting her, setting her up? Right oh no, now I, don't. Saying, I don't. Hi, Linda. Hi. Can you, Linda? Can you say hi to the guys? Everybody, hi, Linda. Here. Goes on right now. Oh, hey, baby. Right. Okay. Hi. Yeah, yeah. I know that. I oh, didn't yeah, you didn't tell her that you were on. Great. No, you gave me warning. I gave you no warning. Linda, would would you um, talk to us for a moment about um, Bert and I were no talking? No leading questions. No leading oh, questions. Okay. Here, do you want it? Well, Just she can't hear you. What what question do you guys want me to ask Linda? Linda can a- can answer the question. Whose idea guys. was um dinner this okay. this Saturday? Linda, whose idea was dinner this Saturday? It was mine. I need to see the text that you sent her. I do. Too. I, I, I need to all see right, the Linda, text. you just you know what? Now you're lying. These, these guys don't believe you. They think it's my idea, and they think that um, that uh, that I've somehow coerced you to say that it was your idea. Well, that's true. Okay. And oh, so that we. <laughs> dude you need to just stop right now you need to stop what time ask her what time okay. yeah what time did she yeah. ask scott and rachel wait, wait wait okay alex wants to know what alex what time 
Yeah. Did you send an invitation to Scott yeah. and Rachel? When did you, Linda, send an invitation to me and Rachel about dinner this upcoming Saturday night with you and your husband? And with no, Bert no, stop, stop, fiance. stop right there. Oh, okay. Yep. What, what, when did you what? invite me, Linda? Uh, when did, when did the arrangement take place? Yeah. Um, that was like, I don't know, last week. Okay. And last week we were talking about having dinner, right? Yeah. We were like, Hey, I haven't seen each other in a while. What's up? When can we, you know, right. catch up? Right. And then, and then you sent me a text, as I recall yesterday saying, Hey, um, Bert and Tanya are in for Saturday night. Are you and Rachel in? I mean, that's yeah. the way I, I, that's the way I recall it. Wow. Yeah, I think it's good. You know, so I leading. There's a buffer a couple. This is so you know leading. I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Dude, you just okay. let the witness, no, bro. No, that would have been thrown out of court. Yeah. Yeah. No you leading the witness. Let the witness. Yeah. What? Yeah, Alex and Brown are both. Well, she doesn't know the whole. Tell her to listen to Monday show, and then she'll know. But under COVID circumstances, I have this is the biggest group I ventured out with. So Mm. it happens to be the exact same number as Scott's group that he always ventures out with. Did you tell her that you two are COVID deniers and you guys don't care about COVID? Um, (laughs) You have to explain to her why, because I don't want her to think that we're offended because. Tell her what we're going to do. We're going to have to. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to zoom you, Linda. This yeah. is not we're gonna have to zoom you, I think. We're, we're zooming. We're gonna have to zoom. All right. Is she available right. to zoom right now? We are, have are you available segment. to zoom right now? Oh Jesus. Okay, yeah. Okay. All right, I'm we're gonna, gonna send you a zoom. I'm, I'm gonna forward her the zoom All right. right now. All right, hold on. I have uh, how did this happen? Do we ever you know how words? you got caught? Thanks, Bert. <laughs> you got caught. That's how the, it happened. The officer Bert came in and bro- busted this whole bracket you got going up. I don't care uh-huh. if people don't care about this. I think this is far more entertaining <laughs> than us talking about LeBron and the Jazz tonight. That's my. All right, I want to tell you Sunday, 10 a.m. What are you guys thinking on Saturday? Also, should I throw out an invitation mm-hmm. to Bert and Tanya? Wait, 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 wait. Where are you guys? Uh, no, you already previously established a reservation. No, no. She mm-hmm. said, she said to me, Hey, I'd really like to, uh, t- to see you. Um, she said, and by the way, she said, Joseph, the flyover guy, you guys know the San Diego sign yeah, guy. Yeah. sign guy. He, he works at a new Mexican restaurant. No B he works on Saturdays. How about we get together next weekend? This is Linda. I said that would work. So then, uh, Friday of last week, she said, I'll text midweek to confirm. Uh, she said, full disclosure. They do not serve arugula. Well, that's an inside joke. I get yeah. that one. I said to her, I will survive. Okay. Sunday well, let's, morning. Let's, let's pause this for one second. Let's get Linda on. Okay. Is she ready to go? No, we need to go to break. That's why. Oh, okay. And why didn't, you, right. bring these, why didn't you bring up these newfound so-called texts 20 minutes ago when this started? Because I felt confident in my position. And every time you read the same text, it's, re- it's read differently and has different words in it. Why is that? No, it's the same. Just no, different tonality. Oh, okay. Yeah. Bert Grossman is here. This has turned into a controversy we did not expect today. This is the beauty of the broadcast. Everybody stick around. Linda will join us next. All right, everybody. Um, today's show has gone completely off the rails. It happens oftentimes when Bert Grossman is in the house, but today has taken another turn. And um, to really now get deeper into the story we had to add to the broadcast. So we got Grande, we got Big Brown in the house, actually bringing the street cred from the podcast shed. Burt Grossman from the headquarters of the San Diego Strike Force offices. I'm home in my home studio playing defense, been attacked by all. Uh. Now here is the lovely Linda Welby in her natural form, by the way. Take a look, everybody. Hi, Linda. Hello. How are you, gorgeous? I'm doing okay. It's, it's good to hear from everybody. A little bit of a surprise, you know, but uh, that's okay. Linda, is that an L on your necklace? Like Laverne from Laverne and Shirley? It's like, yeah, it's for Laverne. That's wow, what the L- I like that. I like that. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> where, are are you, where are you? Are you like on Radio Row or something somewhere? What's happening? Strike Force headquarters, indoor football's <laughs> finest team. Sweet. <gasps> Award-winning. Award-winning team, yes. No, one <laughs> game winning. Wow. Two in two years. So I what the, <laughs> how this all happened. Okay, it's Linda. Probably let, let, can, Alex, can Alex be the moderator here, not you, yeah. Scott? Because you have too much skin in the game. Here. All right, Linda, let me set this up for you real quick. It's very simple. And by the way, it's really good to see you. I miss you. Um, Who? 
too. I miss you too. Well, you were okay. invited, Alex. You could have very, started. very, Saturday. very. It's a very, very simple story that has just derailed our uh, this whole week. Um, Scott Cap. We found out that Scott Kaplan and and Rachel, his girlfriend, have this system in place where a they power a power ranking system of dinner. So what they do is they make reservations for six people, up you know, like minimum six people. Yeah. Without having those six people locked in to the reservation and mm-hmm. then they fill the seats and if they are unable to fill the seats of their roster of ranking couples then they drop the the reservation to four and on monday we found out that they had a reservation for six and ended up just making the reservation down to two and browner was very offended that instead of texting browner and myself because Mm -hmm. we have couples or browner can get one then they just decided to go to two instead on top of this about a few weeks ago scott said he was coming to north park for an event with his kid and said would you guys like to have lunch i said i am unavailable browner said yes just hit me up scott decides instead of hitting browner up i'm gonna go to costco instead did not even let browner know that lunch was canceled so that is where this whole thing started. Then on Monday afternoon, Rachel saw or heard the show, texted me and Browner, which we thought was a joke. Right. <laughs> that I have a reservation for six on Saturday. Are you guys available to babysit? And it was funny. And we all <laughs> laughed and it was great. And then we started going back and forth about how blah, blah. And then she called us COVID hiders and how we're freaked out about COVID. And why would I invite you? Because you guys are scared of COVID. Okay. So that's where it was. And that's where we left it. It was, and it was all, over. It, it was, was over. over. Bert comes on today, literally 20 minutes ago. And, and just a throw, because, you know, Bert just loves saying things. He's like, hey, so where are we going to dinner on Saturday night? Or something like that. And me and Brown are like, wait, 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 what? There is a reservation for dinner on Saturday? And, the, and Bert's invited and me and Brown. Now I am actually like, whoa, what's going on here? I can't even get an invite. After saying he was coming more right. south this right. weekend. So then we find out that you are involved mm-hmm. because on Monday – Mm-hmm. Scott said, I have a reservation for six. And, you know, we're thinking about coming down south. And we thought it was a joke. Turns out he already knew that he was going to OB <laughs> with freaking Linda, Austin, Tanya, and Bert. So this is where this whole thing started. And now Scott is trying to blame you for it all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So here is my thing. Uh-huh. And here is where it gets a little com- uh, complicated, I think. And you can strain it all out. You texted him, according to Scott, on Sunday, what are you thinking for Saturday? So Scott definitely knew that dinner was happening on Saturday by the time he made the joke on Monday. (laughs) (laughs) So that is where this whole thing is like... Yeah. is getting warped because now like we think scott is just dogging me and browner on purpose that we're not worthy Clearly. to have we're not worthy to have dinner with rachel and scott is basically what this comes down to well there is definitely a pecking order to their their dining out and and feelings do get hurt sometimes so i i, I totally empathize with your situation i understand it um but yeah i mean it's all scott's fault <laughs> that's what we figured. <laughs> and that's what we figured. But he'll lie again. He'll try to get Rachel on after you. Then he'll try to get the manager at the restaurant on. He just lives this yeah. lying. He was already like, he was already like blaming the sign guy, saying that the sign guy told him about a new restaurant he's working at or something. So well, he, well, here's the thing. I did I did say LaDonna, which is where he works. It's a, it used to be Natty's in Ocean Beach. He's a bartender there. And I went in for some pickup uh not that long ago for, for it's takeout. Called takeout. Laverne. Okay. Pick up, take up. Did you get some pick up, Laverne? <laughs> and I had a gift my sister had given me. So I used that to pay for it. And he was the one who kind of serviced me while I was there. I and I couldn't I couldn't tip with the gift card. So I felt awful. I had no cash. I said, Oh my gosh, Joseph, I'll be back. I'm so sorry. He said, Oh, come back. I work Wednesdays, I work Saturdays. And he's like, Yeah, I'd love to see people. And so that's why I thought go there and you know because joseph works there and he's a big uh, he's a great friend so i got a question so it was all scott's idea scott did all the setting up all you did was pick the restaurant correct that's pretty much it scott okay, yes cool so scott. 
Guilty. Now, now, guilty. Now, now, anybody, <laughs> now, anybody who knows, this is very easy for me to wiggle my way out of. I know. He's going to show you the text. No, no. Right? It's just that. Uh, he already tried it's just that. It's just that when it comes, it, when it comes to, um, by the way, I think Rachel's now calling in. I'm waiting for, I don't see her in the waiting room yet. Oh. Um, I think we got our verdict. I don't think we need another witness. I mean, Linda said it's Scott's fault, and there's yeah. no way I'm not going to not side with Linda. And she's going to come in and completely back you up. So, no, yeah. no, no, no I, I think here's, here's my recollection of how this all goes down. Me and Linda are texting. Hey, haven't seen you. How are you? What's going on? Linda takes the lead. She says, hey, how about dinner next Saturday night? Me, I'm like, yeah, okay, but I'm not really thinking that this is going to happen. Next thing I know, Linda's hard charging. Hey, <laughs> uh, should I invite Bert and Tanya? And I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. Okay. What are them for? And I was like, because I really like them. Wow. And so then, so then Linda starts putting this in motion. She says, hey, I've got Bert and Tanya booked, confirmed. And then I call Rachel and I say, hey, it looks like Linda's putting this dinner together with Bert and Tanya. Sounds like fun. We should go. Sounds yeah, like fun. You just said no to us. No, because if it were just uh, it would be like more of a C team. But now we get the power players involved. Yeah. Ooh. So uh, <laughs> it went from no, absolutely not, don't invite them to, to Rachel's. It sounds like fun. We should go. You're just a liar, Scott. <laughs> Andy Woodhead. I hear you, brother. <laughs> oh, uh, Linda, I have a, uh, I have a side question, Linda. Were you, yeah. were you invited to Scott's Halloween party? Oh, okay. oh. Let me. Okay, mm, Alex. Okay, yes, it's a yes or no question. It's yeah. a yes or no question. What are you doing? It's a yes Alex or no question. Stirring the pot. He's stirring the pot because this goes back to oh, oh, emotions are starting to come up. It goes back to his son's bar mitzvah. Mm. How, old, how old is Justin? Forty, 20, almost twenty-one. <laughs> okay his bar mitzvah and and i wasn't invited to that and i was i was slightly hurt at the time um no, wait I was anybody like, on this call invited to the bar mitzvah no okay yeah but you yeah. it was your time it was i was already work time. i was already working with him yeah we're all the d team here we're, we've established that we're the d team <laughs> no what we're anyway. establishing so no, it, what we're I establishing was, between browner and myself is that we're co-workers yeah you're not yeah. friends right. clearly we're employees right Oh, and that's so, an even better word, employees. So what am I now? I'm I'm now a friend slash intern because I'm not getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, All right, where, Alex, yeah. but you're invited. I, I see that Rachel has joined the call. Oh, the line is going to start now. This is Rachel's first appearance on the show. <laughs> How's it going? What circumstances hey, to be in? Mm -hmm. What happened? Uh, <laughs> you guys got busted. Happened. That's what happened. <laughs> busted. What do I have to defend? Where's Linda? We need to be I, side by I, side. And you know, here's the thing, right? <laughs> Feeling, feelings were hurt. The male ego is a very fragile thing. So there's a lot going on right now. Okay. Uh, Alex, do you want to set it all up again, again for Rachel? You don't have to well, go this deep because she right, heard it on the radio. Right, right. right. So you, you saw... You you obviously text us what happened on Monday. You, you which we understood as a joke, saying we have reservations for six on Saturday. <laughs> are are you available to babysit? Which was hilarious. I laughed. It was at a it. great joke. I did. But it was true. Great joke. It Turns out true. though, it was true. And this is where now Linda. Now we, we we just literally Bert is the one that set this whole thing on fire because Bert just was like, hey, so I thought, are we going out Saturday night still? And then that's when this whole Mike thing dropped. happened. And now we figure out that, wait, there is a reservation for six. And wait, there are every single person invited. We know, except me and Browner are not and still not have been invited. Well, I think you should be invited now. Oh, we're, we're not coming now. We're not oh, coming. Hell no. I'm not we're, we're not coming. Yet. Hell no. I'm going to get, get drunk as hell with Brown on Saturday myself. Oh. Uh, that's definitely. We're logic, definitely not coming in. The, the logic behind that was kind of, um, well, the, the amount of people, number one, but but kind of like, okay, so Alex has a date and then would, you know, would how would John feel or would you feel left out or? Oh, stop. What? Just this is stop the burn. Terrible. You need to go back to fly. Shop Brewery. So, oh, Rachel, my so, God. Rachel, so far, Scott has blamed Bert, Linda, 
He hasn't blamed you yet, smart man. Uh, he's blamed the bartender at the restaurant you're going to. Mm -hmm. I think he's blamed Costco. Uh, I think he's blamed Costco. Costco. He's blamed AT and T Hacksaw. service. Hacksaw. He's, he's blamed iPhone 12s. Um, <laughs> so can you like who started this 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 snowball I, here? Who organized it? I got well, a text from Scott that said. <laughs> Like he's texting Saturday you right night, now. To six o'clock, Linda Welby and Bert. That's all I know. <laughs> and I feel like it was a little bit of a reaction to the um, the making fun of you guys not being included in the last times and making up for Linda not coming to the birthday gig a year ago. So I just thought we were all just trying to, you know. Birthday? We heard about the bar mitzvah. We didn't hear about the birthday. Uh, no, you weren't invited, invite Bert. I know. <laughs> I've known him since he's in high school. This is my first invite since... He was in high school. I've known this. You know what? I don't even know why we're having this conversation. Oh, and one last question as far as I'm concerned. Rachel, did you invite Linda to the Halloween party? No. Oh, okay. I, okay, I would like to clarify. I didn't even invite Bert. Scott, oh, five wow. minutes ago, oh, wow. And I came downstairs, and he wasn't even in costume. I'm like, I was. I'm I was Rocky Balboa. One costume. I was Rocky Balboa. Now, wait, why was I asked about the Halloween party? Were Browner and, and uh, Alex invited? No. No, no, but you're no, white. We you're white, out. so we thought you would, would get invited because there was no diversity there. Well, this week, this week we found out that I Rachel uh, invited us to Scott's birthday party a year ago mm -hmm. at, uh, at Kettner Exchange. And now we. Great we, party. Thank you for the invite. But now, now she's more familiar with Scott and Scott's friends. And now she knows that me and Browner are not friends, so we don't need to be invited. We're just employees. And two, the crazy part is, I thought Alex and I performed well at that party. I thought we did great. I thought we were funny. thought we were social. We interacted. It just ain't. It I even work. went to the second part of the party. You know what? Well, I don't know you why you all feel bad. If I would have known 1987 when Scott comes in the pit and I meet him, hey, maybe we'll catch up and go to dinner when I'm 54. <laughs> That's my first <laughs> invite I get. Okay. This is so I've got two things. I've got two things. One is none of this would have happened. It, I don't think it's Scott's fault. I actually divert to Bert because yeah. Bert, you got to know the room when you walk in. You don't just announce to a group of people, hey, about dinner, because that means maybe somebody's not included, maybe feelings would get hurt, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, you kind of put out there. The other thing is now it's out there. And I think that Alex, you and your your fiance, fiance should go. And Browner, you can take my sister because it's her birthday weekend. Man, listen, I already told y'all. I already told y'all what? I already told y'all what? I've already gone out with your sister? Why? I ain't going. I've been there, done that. <laughs> I, I ain't going. Yeah. I told y'all this is this is the this is like the fourth level invite. No way. No even way. Lower Can I just level. remind everybody that COVID was going on and you guys wouldn't even come up here to do a podcast with? Oh, Scott. so just want to oh, say. Oh, I just want to remind. You were group friendly. I just want to remind you that your boyfriend has told us he wants us nowhere near his house. So if if it was up to Browner, he would be sitting next to Scott right now. Thank you, Alex. Well, wow. that's because he's hot for me. We need to have a reunion. Oh, God, whoa, your lies. Your and lies by the way, Linda, I, I appreciate you throwing Bert under the bus. That's great because yeah, he did. He was the one that started this whole freaking right. fire. But yeah. Scott, without a doubt, would have put something on Instagram and then we would have slammed him on Monday anyway. So this was going to come out eventually. So, Scott, explain yourself. Okay, I will. If you'll, if you'll give me the floor, I will. I will explain. It's myself. Corky's fault. <laughs> it's not Corky's fault. It okay, is, I'm just checking the next it is, person. It is, <laughs> it is, it is, it's not Tori Holistic's fault. In fact, if it'll be Tori Holistic's reason that we have such a great time. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. You, oh, you're one of those. Okay. Okay, so let me just say this. I happen to think you guys have taken a lovely thing, a wonderful <laughs> thing, a wonderful human opportunity, and you guys have turned it into a bigger controversy than the media peppering the sheriff yesterday about whether or not Tiger Woods was clean when he got into a car accident. You guys have turned this into a bigger investigation than Congress trying to figure out what happened on the insurrection on January 6th. You guys have turned this into a monster event. Here's the reality, and this is the truth. So help me God. Okay, because I, now I feel like I'm on the stand here. Which God? Right? The, the rabbi or like the, the, the pork eating one? Yeah, pick one. Yeah. He had Don't pork you... the other night. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 know what? you know what? He already told me he's getting carnitas on Saturday night. Oh, my God. So pork God it is. <laughs> yeah. All right. To so the, the 
flare up, you're not even faithful to your God, let alone <laughs> your coworkers and your friends. Having a hard time distinguishing who's who here. Between coworker and friend? Yeah. <laughs> We're all coworkers. <laughs> all right. I'll be quiet. All, all I want to say is this. All I want to say is this. Linda Welby is a great organizer. We miss her. We were looking forward to seeing her. She said, let's expand the group a little bit. Let's invite Bert because we miss Bert and Tanya. We'd love to see them. And it was going to turn into a lovely dinner. Rachel, the accusation is that you and I were going to head south and that we had a standing table of six and that the standing table of six is what turned into the dinner that we're all talking about. And I'm trying to argue to everybody, you're missing it. Linda put the dinner together, which is why we're going to her neighborhood. And it's a wonderful thing. But these guys think they were not invited to a standing table of six as you and I were heading south. That's what these guys are accusing me of. Yeah, that's it is, I think. So. Rachel, did we have Alex ask her, did we have a standing table of six this Listen, Saturday? I'm night? not going to ask anybody any more questions. I think just <laughs> like in judiciary committees, People make up their minds with the facts put, put in front of them. I can ask Rachel, I can ask Bert, and I can ask Linda, and I've asked you. I will get four different answers to this question. I have put all the facts together in front of me. There is a reason why Rachel texts me and Browner on Monday, because there was a standing reservation of six <laughs> that she needed babysitting for. If not, you wouldn't have said these things. You would have said, well, guess what? You know, Maybe this week I'm going out to dinner with Linda and Austin. Maybe you didn't know about Bert. I'll give you that one. Maybe you didn't know about Bert yet Don't by the time we hit recording. But And two, <clears throat> the greatest joke always have a little bit of truth in them. Yeah, that's why that joke was me, so funny. Me and me and me and the GF are thinking about heading south this time, or we'd be willing. I think you said was the word. Willing, we'd be yeah. willing to go Bless down you. south. Yeah, with our presence, willing. Yes. So, Rachel, listen, what do, you, what, what do you make of all this, Rachel? Because, that's what I make of it. Because I mean, <laughs> my my favorite part think, about all of this, though, and I'm Rachel. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Go. No, what do you think okay. about all this? Um, I think we need to have a big party. <laughs> Everybody Not invite invited. Browner and <laughs> Listen, I, all I know is that you guys are going to have a lovely time at Saturday in Ocean Beach. And I know for a fact, and this makes me feel good, that me and Browner will be a topic of conversation on Saturday. For a fact. <laughs> you know what the sad part is? I don't even think you guys were top six in the babysitting options. Well, let alone the too. Yeah, let alone the invite. Yeah. I mean, we did let a kid pass out on our watch. Where are we going to dinner? I'm excited. I love OB. <laughs> it's, uh, new natties. Do natties? Well, you know, natties closed down. They oh, natties. Okay. Still uh, Mexican, but it's called Madonna. It's cool. It's a cool place. Cool. Mar margaritas. Margaritas. Um, uh, Alex and Brenner, are you guys willing to sit in a room with people closer than six feet away without a mask on? It depends. Can you invite me? And then I'll say no. That's all I need. Well, okay. you know, you, you gotta. <laughs> I think it's no. It's not no. It's not for dinner though. This is for their Groundhog Day party that they have every year that we were invited to. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, Linda, I can't believe you. Of all people. <laughs> this what? is a great reunion, Scott. At least this happened. You know, first you did what you did to to um, Todd Marinovich when you got him back on the heroin. Yeah. <laughs> When you drop them off an OB and now this. Maybe we just make the table 10 and see what happens, who shows up. Ooh. Uh, I, good, there's there's like, no the way, problem? there's no way I'm going on Saturday. No way. Really well, this is, this is the no, biggest, no, no. this is the biggest, pittiest invite I've ever heard. No in way I'm going. No chance no. am I going. Alex? No. Okay, table I, I don't. 10. I don't miss you guys that much. It's not even an invite. They just said let's get a bigger table. Right. They said come. Right. <laughs> just get a bigger table. They just, she just announced there'll be more chairs there. Yeah. Because you know why she said that, right? Restaurants mm. only take reservations up to six. Ah, uh, yeah. Ooh. With COVID, you know what? Mm. We can put a little kid table next to ours so you can sit at. <laughs> <laughs> and babysit. They could sit at the bar with Joseph and do shots and everything and heckle Welcome us. Welcome to the bar. <laughs> there's a lot of options there's a lot of options i want to just make this work and make everybody happy because i love all of you well i'm like Dion sanders i'm not here on this planet to serve man or woman because it's just too difficult you can't make them happy i'm just here to serve the lord yeah you eat pork and you're jewish i didn't and say which lord 
<laughs> I'm not sure which Lord. Well, Rachel, thank you for jumping in. Um, thank you for being here. You're welcome. We pre appreciate it. Linda Welby, it is great to see you. Great to see you guys. Burke Roseman, you have done it yet again. Can't wait to see you guys, minus Browner and Alex Saturday. <laughs> okay. Maybe um, next time. <laughs> Alex and Browner, I think we should wrap up here. What do you think, Alex? It's time to go. All right, everybody. Time to put a wrap on this today. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. So funny. Like we literally came onto the air today planning on talking about Tiger Woods. Um, going through this story of what happened, um, who he was with the day before, how people were talking about it on other media platforms, um, San Diego State basketball, the, the Lakers and the Jazz tonight, and like a monster, monster game. We had all these things planned for today's show. And Bert, one line from Bert <laughs> over the entire show. It was great. It was great. It happens, man. I Listen, I don't know if uh, the fifth and sixth segments of today's show are completely unlistenable, but I had a good time. Yeah. Um, the funny part about all of this is how this all does sort of look and feel like a puzzle. Like on Monday, hey, we're thinking about heading south, you know, <laughs> and then and then, yeah, we are heading south to have dinner with Bert. And Lynn. it's like, oh, my God, this does all sound so incriminating, like two plus two plus two. Uh -huh. But I but I swear to you guys, true story. It's fine. Uh, no. no no, no, but it's just funny because Linda did. Linda set all this up and it's really wonderful. I mean, she did, but it's true. Like when she was like, should we invite Bert and Tanya? I'm like, I don't know. Like, should you? <laughs> You're like, no know. way. Yeah. I was like, like, if she would have said to me, should I invite Billy Ray and Kimberly? I'd have been like, oh, wow. Hey, that makes a lot of sense. But I think Linda and Bert are a little closer than we realize. I think Bert's more fun than Billy Ray would have been. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I think that's the reason why she made that choice. Uh, <laughs> I do like great. that. I do like that. Like Linda was like, you know, it's COVID, and that's what I'm comfortable with. It's like you chose Scott and Bert. Okay, cool. Well, you know, and she obviously is a breast cancer survivor. And by the way, her whole family went through COVID. I'm I'm actually mm -hmm. impressed that she that she's uh, she's ready to go. She got the shots, too, didn't she? I don't know. Actually, I don't know that, but she probably did. Oh, once I get yeah. my shots, I'll I'll hug everybody. Yeah. 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 It did. It definitely looks uh, incriminating to be sure, but uh, not really the case. Just all coincidental Lakers jazz who you got. I think tonight I'm going with the Lakers because everybody else is going to think that the Lakers are down and out right now and they've been beaten up and people are talking bad about them and people are panicking about them. And I think this is the kind of game where LeBron has to put the whole team on his back. That's what I think. Browner, what do you think? I think Joe Ingles is going to be a problem for LeBron tonight. Jazz. Joe Alex. Ingles is going to be a problem for – you imagine if I said Joe Ingles is going to be a problem for Kevin Durant tonight? Stop, yeah. what, stop it. Stop what the you know what I, you would know, say? You know, what, here, the hell, here, what would this guy say if I said that? Here's what he'd say. I'll tell you what he'd say. Joe Ingles, who he play for. Yep. No shit. Joe no, Ingles no, is going to be no, – Listen, Joe Ingles is going to give LeBron problems tonight. LeBron's short-handed, man. They short-handed. The, the ja and the Jazz just got whooped. Just got whooped by, the, by, 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 uh, by Brooklyn. Mm. And the Clippers beat him. So they they need to win this game, or they're just paper tigers. So they're coming in. I'd be surprised. I'd be surprised if the Lakers win. Yeah, they're down. They got too many guys out. Well, listen, enjoy the game. Crazy show. I don't know if it was good or bad. It feels kind of good. I liked it. I it's like, like the, when things like this happen. Like the least you've talked in any of the one hundred and twenty three shows we've done for ten ninety. I like it. We were just I loved it. We were just throwing arrows at you the whole time. I know you guys were crushing me and you yeah. guys got it all wrong. We we brought out the evidence in the, in a case. I know mm -hmm. and it looks it it does. It looks very incriminating. I right. make, I agree. Look, but like but like you feel about OJ that he's innocent, you should feel the same about me, dog. The glove don't fit, you must have quit. Mm -hmm. Shout out all to right. Uncle Juice. Can't wait to have you on the show, brother. Terrible. Peace. <laughs>